Hello. <clears throat> How's it going? Uh, I don't want to watch. <clears throat> oh, baby, a blank canvas. Hello. <laughs> super loud music, angry face. Right? There's the first super loud, angry. Uh, Okay, music loud, got it. Music should no longer be loud. Is music no longer loud, or was it never loud to begin with? Because I kind of feel like it was never loud to begin with, but I'll take your guys' opinion on that. Still as loud. Okay, how about now? Is it still too loud now? Like, you don't hear it now. Right, okay, I'm just I'm just making sure that me dragging the slider is even doing anything, that's all. Because I turned it down quite significantly and people said it was too loud. Okay, well, annoyingly it's transitioning between tracks at the moment, but... Uh, also, I want to vote for the Crash Bandicoot new song. Okay, how about now? Like, I can barely hear it, so... <laughs> Seems good. Okay. Sometimes I don't understand audio balancing. I think I do, and then every day I'm surprised. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. Fair enough. Uh, uh, right, let's start. Like, the first thing I need to do, the very first thing I need to do, is make many 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 bot commands <laughs> um oh my god ts josh do you know how many people complain that i don't listen to music and now you're complaining that i do listen to music what do you want from me right let's make many 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 bot commands so let's open the bot thing um i think the first plan is I need to make I need to first download an updated one because it's probably uh, bottomless commands pull origin yeah because it needs updating yeah this is going to take quite some setup so I hope we don't all immediately get bored and leave um, but uh, hold your questions a minute, because there's going to be lots of you joining, lots of you asking questions, and I'd rather answer you all at once, rather than answer the first person who asks it, and then in five seconds another person joins and asks the same question, right? Let's just... Everyone hold your intrigue a second, and we'll get there. I just need to start... I just need to set up a bunch of stuff. Um... Right, let's see. So, let's move that up there. Um, what command class? I need to configure the bot first, which is a thing I can't show you because if I do, I always leak fucking API keys. How do I want to do this? Let's copy this one. Let's put this here. Uh, let's call it Game Dev. Channel name Joshmus. Game name. Right, the game name is. Software and game develop dot dot dot. Are you fucking serious? Software and game development. Okay. Oh god, I need to spell check game development. There we go. So the game name is software and game development specifically. Okay. Generic online. And we need a new game dev one. Okay. And then we make a new commands thing. So we'll duplicate eye racing, I guess. Uh, open containing folder. Copy. Paste. 
Game dev. Okay, right. We're getting somewhere. Game dev. Okay, so then let's get rid of all these. We don't need all this stuff. Sorry, hello, if you've just joined, I'm currently setting up the bot to answer all of your questions, because you're going to ask a billion of them, I'm sure. Right, the very first thing we can do is, what engine? So, bot botimus is, does, oh, sorry, what, and then the next word, engine, And the word after that can be unity. And the one after that can be Godot. And we don't need another group. Okay. Then we'd say Josh is using Godot. 4.2 dev 5 for various reasons. Firstly, he wanted to use Godot before Unity shat itself <laughs> because open source is cool and he hated Unity before it was cool. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. It's very important that I say I I liked I hated Unity before it was cool. Uh, s secondly, because it's f fun to learn. Ah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna actually just say that, that's enough, right? And then I'm gonna link Godot f Dev 4.2 Dev 5 in that. There we go. Okay, right, let's try this. So, let's, uh, added game dev. Let's see if this works. We'll commit this to master. We'll push. I'm, I'm already coding, it's just bottomless things you can't see. And then we do a bot refresh. And it should load. Oh, do, do you know what would help? Would be opening the bot. <laughs> the bot wasn't running. Okay. Bot what CC. Generic. That hasn't worked. Why hasn't that worked? Oh, because I... Oh, because I'm fucking stupid is why that hasn't worked. Oh my god, I, I replaced the eye racing thing with fucking... Oh my god, Josh. You idiot. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, right, 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 right. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, ooh, ooh. Oopsie. Push the master, push the origin. Uh, okay, that's fine. Temporarily, I'm going to run the bot in local mode instead of the other one. Um, just so we can, like, get this working quicker, because online's going to take a hot minute to sort out. Where are settings? Oh, did I not have settings open? Oh, Christ. Okay. Uh, um, oh, baby, where are the settings stored for Botimus? Here it is, I found it. Uh, settings, right, I want to comment, uncomment that one. Yes, comment this one. Perfect. That is not what I wanted to do. No, I want to uncomment that one and comment that one. Wrong one. There we go. Okay. Cool. Okay, right. Now let's reopen the bot. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I know I'm not really reading chat right now. Hang on a moment. Right, okay. The list is generic still. 
That hasn't worked. Game dev not found. Command collection game dev. Oh, because there's a space in it. Josh, you idiot. Well, no, it can have spaces in it. What? Yeah, okay, there we go. Game space dev. But then why isn't it automatically loading? The game name is software and game development. I'm online. Where's generic? Generic's below that. It should load. I don't understand. Channel name Joshmas. Game name software and development. Stream status online. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know why I wouldn't load. Uh, I wonder what the, the the category in Twitch's API is probably called something different. I bet. Um, I bet that's what it is. Uh, but I would have to look through the API response to figure that out. Hey, does someone want to figure out what um, game <laughs> software and game development game category on Twitch is in the API? <laughs> I wonder if it's underscores. I wonder if there's no spaces. I wonder if... Uh, but then, like... But no, because I have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, like, just written out, like... Grand Theft Auto colon Vice City Stories as the game name. So no, it can't be that. So it can't be like spaces or capitals or anything like that. I don't understand. Anyway. Oh, hey, I have a billion new copyright claims on YouTube. Let me read these real quick. Oh, hey, the cutscene percent video is fucked. Woohoo! Okay, that's fine. I knew that was going to happen. Um, right. Where the bollocks was I? Um... Right, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What game engine are you using? Question mark. Hooray! Fantastic. All right, any other questions we want to ask? <laughs> um, I need to uh, bot why not Unity. Okay, well, the thing is it might be on cooldown. Uh, bot, bot why not Unity should work. So that's fine. Um, bot what programming language for Godot? Oh yeah, I'm just using Godot for five with C sharp. Colon. There we uh, save even there. No, not generic. You stupid bot, please. It's game dev, not generic. Please, it's gonna happen every time I change it. Okay, um, Christ, I need to make a little game design documenty thing that'll probably just be paint or something. How do I elevator pitch what the game is? Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Jay, sorry. <laughs> is it going to be a mobile de or desktop console? Okay, okay, these are all the things the elevator pitch is going to answer. I, we need to elevate a pitch something. Um, let's see. What, what? What? How do I do an elevator pitch for this? Um, do I have the old version of this somewhere? Um, Uh, annoyingly, I have the settings file <sighs> for the old version. I don't know if I have the code, though. Uh, oh my, where would this be? Uh, do I have an old version of this? Huh. There's something there. 
Oh, hey, I have an old logo. <laughs> um, I know you guys can't see that. In dev builds? Oh, hey, I have a build. Okay, I'm going to try to run it. Okay, it, it installs. I, I have installed Blockris. Okay. Oh, hey, it opens. Sick. Uh, let me... How do I do this? Um, I will add game capture. Oh, I can hear it even, but I guess... Oh, you can hear it as well. Oh, there it is. Hang on, wait, let's stop the music a second. How do I stop the music? So this is, um... Okay, this is a super... I can't really read it. Hang on, let me full screen this for you. Uh, but put my camera on top. Okay. This is like a really old game I made. This was in university. God, this was years ago. What does this say? Uh, hello, Joshma. Hello, hello. Oh, it knows my name from Windows. I guess. The block was yeah, whatever. I just wrote some bullshit here. Uh, y yeah. Right, okay. Um, what? How do I... Oh, my. Uh... Re resolution? Do I just type it in? Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, no. 1920, but, okay, I don't understand how that works. <laughs> uh, V-Sync's on. I mean, I can turn on full screen. That doesn't do anything. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I have a hair in my mouth. Uh, audio, yes. There is audio. Fantastic. Uh, let me move those over here so I'm actually kind of looking towards the game at all. Oh, did that break the capture? Ah, uh, why did that break the capture? What? Come back to capture. What? Okay, I'll move it back over there. Are we happy now? What? Why? How did I break the capture by doing this? What? Okay, I'll do it again, I guess. Oh, it's just completely broken forever now, I suppose. Okay, very cool. Okay, I guess I'll just reopen it. <laughs> very cool. Do we want to capture the game now, OBS? Oh, excellent. Does it move? Yeah, it does move. Okay. I'll just have it on the center screen, though. Uh, boop. And then boop. I said, I said, boop. Okay, right. So this is a really old version of this game that I have. Um, do I have any stats? Title Times looked at stats. One. Hey! Good shit. Um, this was a game I made in... Fuck, when was I in university? Um... Fuck, when was I in uni? Like, no, before 2015. This would be... This would have to be 2015? 2013? 2012? Can I look at the... Oh, no, it's 2012. The last time this file was changed is 2012. So this is from 2012. This is t over 10 years old. Fucking crazy. Right, why did I just realize that? Okay, this is a game. This isn't even the original version. This is a newer version. The version I'm thinking of. Okay, I'll, I'll do. I'll do the history. I'll do the story real quick. Um. Uh. Pre prepare your clip buttons, I guess. But this is going to be longer than that. So here's the Blockris story. Okay, back in university in 2011, 2012. Um. I had to do Game Boy Advance game development uh, to learn how to do assembly code and stuff. It was fucking terrible. Don't touch assembly code. But the game I wanted to make on it was just a Tetris clone. So I tried to make a Tetris clone on Game Boy Advance, but I couldn't figure out how to render enough sprites in order to have, like, the Tetris board and all that other stuff. So for reasons, technical reasons, I couldn't get Tetris to work. So what I did was that I used the, the raw blocks from the, te the Tetris game I was making pixel art for, 
um, and I like coloured them differently, and I made a completely different game, and it's this. It's like an arcade game thing. That Game Boy Advance game um, was passed around all of my friends and my lecturers at university, and we all had like a little mini like high score getting session between all of us. And it was just some little tiny crappy project I made in Game Boy Advance, but we were all having so much fun with it, trying to beat each other's high scores and stuff in it. And when a game develop, when a game that's in development like that is f fun, and you're just playing the game for fun when you're making it, you know it's a good game concept, right? I had found the fun immediately. Um, anyway, that was a really popular game idea that I had. Um, so later on in university, in 2012, I tried to make an X and A version. Which is what we're looking at here. This is a 720p, because that's the highest I can get the resolution to go. Uh, X and A version of the game. Uh, if you don't know what X and A is, it's a Xbox 360 indie game development thing. But anyway, this is a Windows version of the game. And it was like a game I tried to make while in university. And as you can see, I got decently far. Um, but it was basically just a recreation of that game, but on Windows. So I'm going to show you what the game is. Uh, music is a little bit loud. Yeah, okay, that would have been nice to know before I did that entire speech. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Let's try. I'm gonna press play. I don't remember what the controls are. We're about to find out. Um, oh, there's classic, reverse, in Soviet mode, block chase you. Okay, and then there's test. I don't know what test does. Let's just do classic. Uh, play the game classic block risk style. High scores increase the avoid and no end. Ever good, ever. Good luck, Josh. Okay, it's taking my name from the Windows file. Okay, and it's broken. Why is it broken? Okay, well, this is broken. So basically, this is the game. I don't remember being able to move in three dimensions. That's weird. Were you always able to move in three dimensions? Okay, this is really broken. That's unfortunate. Um, three dimensions? Sorry, two dimensions, I mean. Oh, shit, I got a power up. Oh, my God, I don't remember all of this. The version I remember in my head was way simpler than this. Anyway... It's just a simple fucking, like, blocks fall down from the bottom of the screen and you have to, like, hit them with your block. There is no, it's just a silly little arcade game, right? I don't know what you guys were expecting, anything, like, massive or storyline or anything like that, but this is it. Uh, and I've had this idea in my head for ages as, like, this isn't, like, a groundbreaking video game or anything. But what it is, is a decent starting point to learn stuff and to, like you know, remember how to do game dev and to get good at it again, right? Um, it's just a really simple idea and I think it would make, like, a decent mobile game. Um, oh, fuck. Uh, this version that I made on, yeah, X and A is, like, totally different to the one I remember, but unfortunately I don't think I have the original Game Boy Advance one anymore. And even if I did, um, I don't know how I would run it. I need a Game Boy Advance emulator and stuff, and I probably have to build the code, and I don't remember how to do any of that. But anyway, yeah, this is obviously unfinished. It's obviously broken on, like, my modern system for some reason. I don't know why it's broken. Maybe it's using my screen size for stuff. I don't know. But anyway, this is all the game is. You're just a cube that flies around and hits other cubes. There's obviously... There's no juice here. There's no, like, special effects. There's no cool things happening. Um, what the fuck is happening here? When I press spacebar, the, the cube goes faster. Um, yeah, this is obviously super crap, but this is the basic idea of what I wanted to make. This was just a thing I threw together in like a week in 2012. <laughs> um, that's the game idea. That's all I want to do. If you wanted anything way more complicated than that, I'm sorry you're disappointed, but this is going to be my first game I'm making in several years. I kind of need to start small in an engine I've never used before, right? So this is all we're going to do. We're going to make a mobile version of that. Um, ugh, that, that That's it. <laughs> we're going to make a mobile version of this. The game is going to have to be... I want the game... What I was thinking... Let me open Paint real quick. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's not good. Uh, right. Uh, hang on. I need to now make it so you can see Paint. <laughs> Perfect. Um, whoop. Sorry, my main monitor is uh, portrait at the moment, not horizontal, so this is going to be a bit weird. But um, yeah, so what I'm thinking is we have a phone, right? And you hold it like this. I'm going to use a thicker pen so you can actually see. So you have a phone and you hold it like this and your hand is like here or whatever with your thumb here. 
Yeah, that's that's a hand and an arm. Don't question me on this. Um, I need to figure out some kind of control scheme, but holding the phone like this would work. The 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 aspect ratio of the game works well. Because if you have your cube down here, and there's cubes that fall down from the top of the screen, that gives you a lot of screen real estate for this. So it lets you, like, hold your phone vertically. But there are, there are several control schemes I'm thinking of. So there's one where you have the cube, right? And you can, like, put your finger on it and then move it left and right. I don't think up and down is necessary here. We can simplify this by not having up and down. But you can like put your thumb, I can put my thumb on it and move left and right and have the cube be underneath my thumb the entire time. But that presents some problems. The first problem is that you never get to see the cube because your thumb, unless the cube is huge, your thumb is always on top of it. Um, the second problem is that I can't control speed. Like you'll be able to always move your phone, your thumb, like, as fast as you need to, realistically. Yeah, it doesn't seem good. It seems intuitive. That The, the pros are, it's super intuitive, because I'll, you'll be able to, it's, like, instinctive. You just move your thumb where you want the cube to be. That's easy, right? So it's super intuitive that it works like that. Uh, it'll be really fluid, but the problem is, yeah, you'll just be able to move at, like, infinite speed. I won't be able to balance the speed of the cube. I won't be able to give power-ups for the speed of the cube. I won't be able to do anything like that. And you won't be able to see the cube ever because your fucking thumb is on top of it. Um, the next idea would be to just fucking herp derp. Let's just, make, like, you know, have two buttons down here that control left or right. And you press these with your thumb and then the cube goes left, right? <laughs> but, of like, a virtual joystick. But then, like, have you ever played... A game with a virtual joystick on mobile i absolutely fucking hate it i hate it so much i yeah see see balance to say i hate those games where you have the fucking stupid virtual joysticks or like two buttons or whatever right so like what, what would be worse is a virtual joystick that you put your thumb on when like up and down doesn't even fucking work and you can only go left and right that would be even worse right so that's absolutely terrible but the pros of this would be that you know, I can I can control the speed of the cube, like, in the game. I can give you power-ups and stuff. But the next problem with this is that in the original version of the game, you had two buttons. You had, you had the directional controls, your two input methods, I guess. You had directional controls, which is left and right, but then you also need, like, a boost button. Um, b boost, I guess. You need a boost button, right? How does this work? Because if you're just playing with one hand, you can't, you'd have to press boost and then go back to pressing left and right. It just seems terrible. Like that control scheme seems fucking awful, right? Double tapping is like another possibility, but have you ever like with one hand tried to double, like double tapping a virtual fucking button seems terrible. I, I, I was thinking about this and I think there is a way that this could work. Um, we would have the play field be slightly further up. And then we'd have some invisible barrier here, and then like, like this. And then this is the left arrow, and this is the right arrow. This isn't visual to the player, maybe, or maybe I have some sort of like transparent line or something. But if you have your thumb on the right-hand side, the cube goes right. And if you have a thumb on the left-hand side, the cube goes left. And if you take your thumb off, it doesn't move, maybe? Like that, that might be able to work. So then like, this is a lot less precise. Like, you just have the whole, like, the whole bottom section of the screen. This is when Faye sends me a DM that's like, Mmm, Josh, I want you, or something. <laughs> um, th this will be, like, the, the, the whole bottom of the screen will be split into two, and then you can press on the left side screen or the right side of the screen to use the thing or whatever. I need a prop that isn't a phone to demonstrate my <laughs> stuff, because I'm so nervous I'm going to get a DM or something. Um, or like someone, like, I'm trying to buy bikes at the moment, uh, and someone's gonna send me their address for me going to buy their bike while I'm holding the phone up to the fucking camera, aren't they? No, that is stupid. No, just make it, you rotate the phone left and right and the box moves. So, there's an, that's the other option, is like, rotational movement, but like, <laughs> have you ever actually played a game of that? 
do you know how fucking imprecise, like, this is? Have you ever been on a bus and tried to play a game that uses this? <laughs> like, no. No fucking gyro controls. This is going to be about, like, precision... It's about precision movement on a, of a cube hitting, like, other tiny cubes on a screen. Like, that is absolutely not going to work. Like, it will never be precise enough. Um, like, a, a car game, like, I... I don't know how much you guys know this, but for racing games on mobile, they're all a lie. <laughs> the game does so much work in the background to help you steer and help you keep going forwards. Like, you know, um, oh, what happened to music? I forgot about that. You know, um, have you ever played, uh, like a shooter game on a console and you're wiggling the stick and somehow you're hitting people and they like auto aims and stuff. Mobile games is like even worse for that stuff, right? Like, the racing games are pretty, like, have super-duper auto-steer stuff, right? None of that stuff actually works. Um, I don't know what other... I'm not, like, super good at... I don't play a lot of mobile games. I don't know a lot about mobile games. And as a game designer, you need to play a lot of games to have, like, a good, like, understanding of this genre or whatever. And I don't have this. So I don't know if there is a control scheme out there that makes the most sense for this sort of thing. But I think, like, I think the split screen is, like, the only way to do this. Um, swipes. But that's so imprecise. Have the whole screen to left and right button. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'd, oh, okay, I guess, yeah, I guess. Why not slide the finger on the bottom part of the screen to move the block? Okay, so if I have this as a slider instead, right, and the cube's here, and you slide your thumb from the center all the way over to the left, like, in an instant. The problem is, I want to have a custom speed for the cube. I don't want it to follow the speed of your thumb. So it would move, like, a lot slower than you moved your thumb across, right? I'd, I, I, I could try it. I don't know. That, that could work, but I, I feel like the juxtaposition of where the cube is to where your thumb is would be really shit. Um... I'm not sure. Something like Temple Run? Temple Run has, like, three fucking lanes that you need to be in that the game needs to interpret a swipe in. This is, like, free form movement of, like, left and right across, like, a fucking 1440p image. Like, <laughs> no! It's not, it's not the same! It's not gonna work! <laughs> um, what if the cube follows your thumb position but maxed out speed so there's lag? That's what I'm saying, Mailer. So it would, like... I could try that. That is a, that is another option. Um, ha having, yeah, having a slider like this, so it would be like, um, you know, like a volume slider where you have like, you know, like you have like a line and there's a little circle thing and you move a slider back and forth. I can just have an invisible one of those and the cube like lerps to the position of the slider cleanly. Or like, um, or, or or has a maximum momentum, right? So, so when you move the slider over here, so say you go from 100% volume to 10% volume on a volume slider, like you're watching this on Twitch, you have this like, <laughs> you you can move the volume on my stream up and down now to see what I mean by a slider, right? That everyone knows how to use one of those. We'd have an invisible one down here, maybe even a visible one, um, but yeah, the cube attempts to match the position of the slider to move across left and right, but, but is the, is the juxtaposition of your thumb being in one place and the cube taking a really long time to get there, is that, um, is that going to be bad? I don't know the answer. I think this is actually a good idea and you're right chat, we should do this, but I, I don't know how that's going to feel, but then like, but then even in, like, the fucking ver the, the PC version I just played, right? When I press A, the cube doesn't instantly snap to the position where I'm, like, imagining it to. There's a lag with the cube moving moving when I press A, right? So maybe maybe it feels fine. I don't know. We have to test it, right? We ha we have to, we'll have to test it. Um, yeah, we, 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 we test it. See, see what this is like. So... So that's the plan for now. The, the, that's the main thing I'm worried about. That's the only thing I can't... I, I wasn't confident of a solution of. 
So, so th I think these are the two options. Are like we have the oops, the the two options are oh shit. Um, the two options are the hidden buttons. So you hold that to go left, hold that to go right, or the slider. Those are the two options, I think. Um, yeah, but then the the may, may maybe realistically i think you could have both in the game right i don't think there's a reason you can't have both of these control schemes available right um yeah that's why that's what i'm saying nice so says you could do a toggle option like this isn't uh this isn't i could balance both the same right both of these things the, the cube has a set movement speed and moves across them in the same way um it's just two different control schemes so so for the pc version you know we'd use the button primarily but then on mobile you could have the slider all the buttons hell on pc you could use the slider if you wanted to use a mouse right so yeah both options let, let let's do the the what 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 why not both question mark let's do the why not both approach and just do both of them <laughs> and we'll see which one feels better right um yeah we'll see Sh slider doesn't seem right surely it would be better to get the x position of the player finger in that little bottom area and then lurp to that position the speed you want why not use the entire screen in the split screen control version it would give more free well yeah yeah sure like the that that that's fine, F not. I, I will use the entire screen. That that's fine. That that makes sense. But I'm trying to understand what Sergeant Adman's saying. Slider doesn't seem right. Surely it would be better to get the X position of the player finger in that little bottom area and then lurp to that position at the speed you want. Well that is just the slider. Like, okay. Okay, may, maybe I don't actually use a hidden invisible slider, right? But like I'm just trying to explain it in a way that makes sense to people, right? Like, yeah, we, we get we get the exposition of the thumb, and then we lerp, or not maybe not lerp because that would be it would slow down the closer it gets. But like, maybe lerp actually maybe that'd be fine. But anyway, we move the cube to the exposition over time at the speed, right? Like yeah, like a slider is just a another way of explaining the same thing, um, but it, it's essentially the same thing, right? Like I I don't want a visible slider that you have to move your thumb up and down on. It can just be like, yeah, it can just be an invisible process, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The issue of the slider is tapping somewhere else and instantly moving the cube to that location. Well, first of all, it won't instantly move. <laughs> but second of all, yeah, but then that means you can like tap where you want the, the cube to go. I think that's okay. That might actually feel good. So you see a cube coming down. I'm, I'm doing it on my phone. You can't see. So you see an enemy cube coming down. And you like tap your finger there. And then your cube moves across to it. And then you could tap underneath the other cube. The next cube. And then your cube will move across to it. I think that might actually be good actually. Like you can. Yeah. Like you, you can slide. You can slide your thumb across to get the exposition. Or you can just tap it. I feel like both of these are f perfectly valid. Again, they're the same thing. Just one of them is whole dragging the slider. Like, it, again, <laughs> use the twitch volume slider. You can click the volume slider into a certain position. Or you can drag it. But both of both work, right? <laughs> and they're both the same control, right? <laughs> like, so... So, like, both... We could do both of these in the same control scheme, right? <laughs> Um, right, so that that's my main worry, is the control scheme for the game. Everything else, I think, is perfectly doable. We'll, we'll soon see. Um, but yeah, that, that is the full explanation of what I'm doing. I hope you all remember that, because I'm certainly not doing all of that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's actually get to making this. So my first problem is I don't know anything about Godot. So I hope you guys are going to be real patient with me because this isn't going to be a and let's get wait to work thing like i don't i don't really know what i'm doing here um i've dabbled with godot a tiny bit but like the very first problem is that the, the game is widescreen and not portrait 
Uh, you fix your bot in gear. Oh, thank you, Arco. Um, I will now move the bot over to uh, to Git, I guess, instead of using uh, the other thing. Hold, hold up. Uh, documents. Uh, this one. Uh, that one, that one. That one, that one. Save, close, close, refresh bot. As I suspected, you capitalized the category wrong. A hey, Lamo. Game dev, hooray. Bot. What, CC? Hey, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, so, how was it capitalized wrong? Did I need to... Uh, 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 ch ch uh, whatever, just master push. I know. Fetch, and then push. Please no, please no things. Okay, good. No things. I can't remember words for things. Um, fix capitalization of games at right. So it's not a capital A. Oh my god. So the capitalization does matter. What the fuck? Okay. That's really, yeah, that's really stupid. Capital and, god damn it. Okay, um, so, the very first thing I need to do, I think, is go through the settings file for the project. Um, project settings, there we go. Okay, uh, why can't you guys see this? Am I just going to have to do screen capture instead? Hold on. Uh, display capture L left. Uh, not that one. Not that one. That one. Okay, and then we put that whoop here. Yeah, that'll do. Whatever. Fuck it. Uh, right. Um. <sighs> Yeah, OBS can't capture extra windows. Yeah, that's a good point. I thought I forgot this is like a totally different window. It's going to open this all the time. Right, okay, let's go through this. So name, localized. We're not going to worry about localization. That's like way too much. Um, run, main scene. We don't have any scenes yet. Boot splash. We'll worry about that later. Window, right, okay. Um, so we're going to want to open... Ah, oh, that's right. If I run this on PC and I have it be vertical, that's going to be a real fucking problem. Oh, yeah, by the way, the reason I'm using a uh, in-development version of Godot um, is because uh, uh, the Android, using C Sharp and exporting to mobile is difficult. <laughs> uh so only, this is the late. I need to use the latest version of Godot 4.2 because that's the only one that you can actually export to Android at all. But it's quite a difficult process apparently. So we're gonna have a good laugh with that. Um, but I don't really want to learn Godot script. Um, yeah. So uh, how do I have? Okay, so this is already a problem. Is that? Yeah. So so on on handheld we want portrait um but yeah on pc we're gonna have to run the game in like a small window because the game's gonna be portrait not landscape which is already really shit so How do we do this? Um, I'm going to have to... Okay, this, this is going to be a whole lot of me Googling things, I think. Um, is just how this is going to have to be. Let's see. Uh, um... How do I want it? So, so, Godot, let's try Godot Portrait PC, not Portrayal. Mm, 
multiple resolutions. Change between portrait and landscape mode. Best way to set up dialogue portrait. Portrait screen. Yeah, so this is more of a game dev problem. Um, it's pronounced Godot. Yeah, Godot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> L look up the pronunciation. It is Godot. <laughs> it's like French or whatever. You don't say the T. Um, has anyone played a portrait game on PC? Uh, like the old... Does anyone know of a portrait game on PC? Marvel Snap? That's not portrait though, is it? It has like a widescreen version. You play emulated games on Bluestack. Okay, ha do you know how it works? Like, yeah, like some smups. Like, um... Let's open Steam. Why portrait though? Hello, you have missed the explanation. Please go back and watch the VOD part where the I explain <laughs> what everything is. I'm going to be saying that a lot today. <laughs> right, let's find a shmup to look at. Uh, let's just search a shmup on on uh, Steam. Nine Sentinel Sisters. This is a sideways one. Is it? It looks anime. I would have thought this would be not sideways. Okay. I need to find a portrait game. Um, I just want to see... So, so what I'm doing is I just want to see what other people do for their portrait games. Marvel Snap does have a portrait mode. In the settings. Okay, I shall open Marvel Snap. Update queued. Of course there is. Um... Okay, let's try this. Uh, well, it's opening on my portrait monitor, so... We'll see, I guess, if how this handles this. I wonder if it switches automatically or not. But yeah, I guess it's, I guess it's just going to be other mobile games, really. Uh, resume as guest. Please just let me fucking... Maybe later, right? Where's set? Oh my god, stop fucking popping up with shit. Settings. Landscape. Off. Right, okay. I know you guys can't see this. Um, you can hear it though. Uh, I need to play the music again. Where's the music gone? Go, music. There we go. Uh, speaking of to smups, here's Toho music. Um, right, I know you can't see what I'm looking at. This is going to be a constant issue with this, I'm afraid, because I don't want to just show all of my monitors all the time, but, um, this isn't really, like, can I make it not full screen? Yes, I can make it not full screen. Okay. Now, what happens if I put this on another monitor? Right, so it just, it leaks over the side. Oh my god, it's buggy as hell. Um, and then if I resize this, yeah, okay, so it just tries to keep that resolution. Um, I guess I could put this over here, so here's Marvel Snap, right? So, it just, it just scales cleanly and then has a thing on the top. So if I turn on full screen, yeah, okay, so this is what, so it, do, it has a background to it, okay. Hmm. And it's a lot wider than I thought. Like, it's very wide. What what are like common mobile phone resolutions? Like, what's Apple doing? My phone's taller than it is wide. I'd really thought this would have been like if I hold my phone up to my monitor until it reaches the right size. Yeah, it'd be way thinner than that. Yeah, it's the iPhone... Oh, that maybe this is the tablet. 
Yes, that's true. This is the tablet one. Ah, oh, no. Okay, so... So before I've even begun, I'm already hitting, uh... Yeah, hitting... This is a big problem. Is that... Every fucking device has a different aspect ratio. If it was just different resolutions, that'd be okay. But they're different aspect ratios. So the game is gonna have to... I hate this already. Uh, fucking screen resolution independency is already difficult enough, but screen aspect ratio independency? So whatever the background is, is going to have to be either procedurally generated and infinite to account for any aspect ratio, or is going to have to be a very large, very cropped image, or infinitely repeating somehow to account for any different aspect ratio. Um... Yeah, I, I, I can stick to 9 by 16 for now. I think large and crop it to aspect ratio might be best. So, okay, so everyone who is talking in chat right now who hasn't made a game before, <laughs> you don't understand how big a problem this is. This I have ran into this a lot just making PC games before. Like having, there's a reason so many games don't support 16x10 or ultra wide or all those other fucking monitor types, right? It's because this is actually quite a complicated problem. And that's just getting wider, let alone fucking taller. And then like, you have tablets, which are fucking 4x3 even, like not even 16x9, like anywhere near 16x9. I think, uh... I think I'm just going to have to, like, not worry about this for now. Um, but this is going to be one of those problems that will require me to completely remake everything later. But I don't really know what alternative I have. And then there's Galaxy Fold. Isn't that just 4x3, though? Or is that more of a square? Hmm. Because, like, I can't extend the game field on... If we had a wider screen, I can't extend the game field because the game literally becomes harder. Hmm. I have a fold one to test on. We're all, that's a bit beyond. <laughs> the scale of stuff. Yeah, I guess, like, the simplest solution would just be fucking black bars on the side. Right, anyway. <laughs> what numbers am I typing into this to make it portrait? So I guess I could just flip this. So... I'm gonna be making this on... a uh, The width would be 14440 and the viewport would be 2560. And we'll make it... full screen... Um, center of primary screen. Oh, I can make it windowed borderless. Yeah, that's probably better. Um, why not Unity? Wow, how did you avoid the bot with this? <laughs> why does... How... How does why not Unity not trigger the bot? How does that happen? <laughs> okay. Um, initial position, initial screen, resizable... Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. Boardless. Because resize was going to let me test this shit. Um, okay, we're going to close that. Right, let's just open the fucking thing. Uh, I don't have a scene yet. Okay, I'm just going to make a fucking 2D scene. There we go. S save. Uh, scene. And we're definitely not going to use this scene for everything. Select current. Alright, we're, we're going. It's going. Okay, it has not opened on the center monitor, which is very aggravating. Okay, this is so fucking broken. Oh my fucking... Okay. 
Strong start, Godot. Strong start. I know you guys couldn't see that. Um, I'll work on letting you see things. Okay, let's... Uh, let's make this actually full screen for now. Just so I can actually see what the fuck is going on. Okay. And then moving it to the center monitor breaks it completely. Oh boy. Uh, center of primary screen. Center of other screen. Center of screen with mouse pointer. Center of screen with keyboard focus. I'll do that one and then I'm going to quickly move my mouse over here. <laughs> and it still opens on that monitor. Amazing. Okay. And uh, not the correct resolution. Right. Let's do it. Like this. Not borderless. Windowed. Go. Hell, maybe this test build doesn't respect these settings. Yeah, so the problem is it's like way off of the screen. And if I move it into the middle one, it's like horrendously stretched. Ah, oh, Christ. How is this already a fucking nightmare? Do I need to disable resizable, perhaps? Would that help the situation? Now it won't go into my middle monitor at all. Incredible. Okay. Oh, okay. Alright, so I've stumbled on the ex very, very first hurdle of this. So this setting doesn't even seem to work at all. Because if I could just get this to fucking open... I guess I just have to do a smaller resolution, but phones have fucking massive resolutions. I would kind of want this to be the highest resolution that I could see on my monitor. Just like start with for testing purposes. Oops, shit. Let's do. Let me play 1920 by 1080. Is that going to be small enough to display on... Failed to build project. I, I've literally already broken everything. How? 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 What have I done? <sighs> oh, do I have the game open still? No. What? Is it Windows Defender being fucking stupid? Blockriskado.deps.json is being used by another process. What? Like v Visual Studio? Oh my god, how has this just got, like, more broken? It's, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, downloads. 
downloads, 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 downloads. This one. Run. Run. Something is holding on to this file. Mono temp. Documents, GitHub, block risk, Godot, mono temp, bin, debug, glo block risk, Godot, depths.json. Godot, mono temp. Bin debug. The JSON folder file. Get out of here. I'm just going to delete this entire temp folder. <laughs> oh, is it fucking... Is it that? Right, it's fucking um, Google dr Backup Drive. Google Drive doing it. Okay, there we go, I got there. Um, yeah, the problem is I just can't... I just can't get the game to be on my fucking center monitor in, in a way that has any, makes any sense at all. Um... I found plenty of alternatives, Arco. Having the time for implementing them is a different thing. Google Drive was holding onto the file and preventing Blockers from touching it. I just can't, like, I can use the Windows buttons to move this shit around, but because it's too tall, I can't get to the bar at the top. And I can Windows left, shift, right to move it to my portrait monitor but it's still crip plop chopped off the top so I can't access it let me do something fucking stupid and move my other monitor on top of this monitor right now it's just what now it's just chopped off of it look now it's just made it a square the fuck? <laughs> oh my god, I hate this. Oh my god, I sort of can grab the top of it. Oh my god, I did it. I grabbed the top of the window. Thank fucking Christ for that. Have you tried snapping Windows left or right arrow? Windows left? That's... Windows no shift left right does nothing. No. Right, okay. <laughs> All I had to do was stack my monitors vertically so I could reach the top of it when it was on another monitor. Yay. Fucking Christ. Okay. Um. What am I even doing? Let's put a fucking image here so I can see this is even working. Um, let's open paint. Let's resize this. Let's make it 1080 by 1920. Let's fill this with red and write something in it. Let's save this as an asset. Documents, GitHub, Blockris. Um, where do the assets go? Uh, where do you put assets in Godot? Actually, I'm not actually sure. The the icon the S is just in the root. Okay. 
Right, here we go, here's Untitled PNG. I'm sure if I drag this in, it should just create a new node or whatever, right? Really? I can't just drag this in to create a new... Am I gonna have to make a sprite and stuff? Okay. Add child node sprite 2D. Create texture. Can't just drag this over. L load this one. Open. There we go. All right. So the node, this is my scene, right? And if I change this position, it changes the scene's position. Um, it's currently at zero, zero, but I want it to be in the center of this. Um, can I change... Oh, thanks, uh, DD. Oh, I need the alert box on this scene. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I forgot about alerts. Okay, there we go. And I don't have... Uh... Oh my god, this is so... My monitor setup is so messed up right now. Um... Hello, friends. Can we not be massive and not be on this monitor? And ah, shit. My monitor setup is so fucked. Okay. See, this is the thing where I need to not show stuff on stream because if I show this on stream, I'm pretty fucked. Because then you get the URL that lets you do bad things. I think. Where the fuck is? My god, I haven't even... I've barely started yet. How long has it been? It's been like an hour, right? Yeah, it's been an hour and I've barely started. <sighs> right, okay. Somehow I managed to size that perfectly. Uh, sorry, let me go through the subs. Um, I don't hear that. Oh, hey, thanks. Canario just resubscribed for 27 months. Post JDQ sub. Thanks, Canario. Nice clean hair, Josh. Th thanks, Canario, for 27 months. Hello. Of tier 3. Uh... Oh, hey, thanks. PHP Mayan just resubscribed for 19 months. It's finally 19 months. Thanks a lot for JDQ. By the way, it was really fun to watch. And enjoy the game, Dev. Thanks, PHP Man, for 19 months. I'm certainly trying. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks. Mike Kiwi's Fuzzy just resubscribed for 32 months. I said I would support dev streams, so here I am, Joshua. Nice. Thanks for 32 months, Mike Kiwi's Fuzzy. Hello. Almost done. Oh, hey, thanks. Xorat777 just resubscribed for 27 months. Thanks, Xorat, for 27 months of Prime. Is it going to oh, keep hey, going? Thanks. There it goes. Vistum just resubscribed for 44 months. Lewis Hamilton. Oh my god, my mouse set up. Okay. Ah, please! Oh, hey, thanks. DDM999 just subscribed. Sorry, I turned the music down for me. It turned it down for you as well, I bet. There we go. I think I got through all of them. Uh, thanks, everyone, for all the subs. Yeah, sorry, I forgot that alerts existed. <laughs> That's why I needed to wear my headset. <laughs> right, anyway. Um, wait, does the game update live? Oh, you guys can't see it is the problem. Um, does that work? That does work. Sorry, this... Oh my god, move. So this update's live? Oh my god! I didn't realize that. Oh, cool, okay. That's actually really good. So I can move stuff in the game live. Okay, sick. Um, let's put that back at zero. Oh shit. <laughs> right, so the scene is at zero, zero, which you probably want. I don't know, like, good, good, do, ekat, et, et, etiquette so I probably just want this to be in the center of the screen um 
Now, the naive way of doing this... Oh, okay, I can turn off centering that. There we go. Done. <laughs> Uh, okay, I was about to say the naive way of doing this would be to just move this into the center, but that doesn't seem right. But you just untick the, yeah, you got centered here, which will center the. Do you guys see what's happening? It's like centering in the image instead of being the top left point of it. Um, okay, well that works then. So then if I resize this, can I resize it? No, I can't resize it. Did I not have that ticked? Oh my god. Oh my god. I did not have resizable ticks. I don't think that's going to change live, is it? No, let's rerun the game. Oh my god. And now it's... Ah! Ah, uh, there we go. Also, OBS doesn't recapture it. Are you fucking serious? You're, it's really not smart enough to recapture this. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's better to do it as a window capture. Maybe it would recapture it. Um. Oh, hey, thanks. Mocha Saffron just resubscribed for eight months. Hi. Hi. Maybe it's smart enough to recapture it if I run it as a thing like that. Okay, whatever. Uh, thanks, uh, Mocha Saffron, for eight months. Hello. How's it going? Right, yeah, so this part of the stream is just going to be me learning Godot things, right? <laughs> um, okay, so... Yeah, if I move it over here... Oh, wow, it, like... Ooh, that really buggers it up, doesn't it? Look at that. Ooh, that's weird. Um... But, yeah, resizing it. So what happens if I resize it? Okay. So if I resize it... I don't know if you guys can see this. But if I resize it, we just get more grey background. So it's not doing any kind of scaling. It's just it's just adding more background to it and chopping stuff off if I scale stuff like this. Um, so that's not really the behavior I want, right? Because if I get like a different... Um, it's going to be centered in the top left. I guess I would want it centered in the... Zero, zero. But then... But then the gameplay would like... Oh, man. This is all stuff that I'd need to just figure out. What working multiple resolutions? Oh, there, oh, there's a fucking thing for it. Okay. The problem with multiple resolutions... Depends on... Yeah, okay. Let's just... Uh, put this over here so we can all sort of read it a little bit. Uh, if I can put my mouse in a position that makes sense. Okay. The problem with multiple resolutions. Developers always have trouble understanding the best of the game for a little bit of the most straightforward as a screen asset with 6 to 9 and But mobile games at first it was easy. For many years iPhone and iPad used the same resolution when the written numbers invented but they don't want to the pictures under the same display assets. Nowadays it's no longer the case that they're playing different screen sizes and densities and aspect ratios. Now conventional sizes are all becoming increasingly popular such as what would spice. For 3D games it's not so much as they just want resolutions. The aspect ratio with the 3D ratio would fill the screen based on the field of view regarding the aspect ratio. The main reason you want to, yeah. Okay. 2D in game UIs is different matter that art needs to be created to use specific sizes to such, but yeah. Okay. Yes, 2D is the problem here. One five six all. The most common approach is to use a single base resolution in the fit of everything else. The resolution is how most players are expected to play the game, give it the hardware. For mobile, Google is useful stats online for desktop, and Steam also does. Like, let's look at stats. Des distribution dashboard. Okay, right. So. This aren't. What? Screen sizes and densities. This, does, this tells me nothing. Small, normal, ex large, extra large. What? Vulcan version, OpenGL ES version, Android baseline profile. Where's resolutions? Uh, uh, that is not what I wanted you to do. Why would you not go back to the... Oh, because it was... What? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, whatever. Ah! 
Uh, yeah, as an example, Steam shows that most common and primary interface is 1080p, so a sensible approach is developing for this version to the handle scale and different sizes of the range. Go to provide several useful tools for this easily. Base size. The base size of the window can be specified in the process under the display window. However, what the, it does is not completely obvious. The engine will not attempt to switch the monitor to this resolution or other thing of the same oh, hey, design right. size. Harry, just resubscribed for three months. Have you guys heard about right. September? So... Uh... So... If I go project, project settings, window, what, where's base size, isn't that what it said? Project display window size, resizable board, oh there's what I'm looking at. It looks a little different but it is what I'm looking at. Okay so yeah, so this is the, the viewport width. Um, says the game main viewport width on desktop platforms is digital representative. Switch mode also exists. Yeah, okay, sure. Right, okay. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, I would rather make the game at, like, the highest resolution my monitor can display. Thanks, Harhawk, for three months. Hello. Yeah, have you guys heard about September? <laughs> Uh, ba 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 ba. However, the design of the office danger will not attempt to either, yeah, yeah, yeah. switch them onto this resolution. Rather, the design size the size area or whatever. Yeah, okay, sure. There's often a need to support devices with screen and window sizes different to the space size. Get off as many ways to control the how the view won't resize the stretch to different screen sizes. Configure the bet straight to configure the stretch base size at runtime of a script. Use a Git tree root content scale size. I don't need to do it from a script. Not right now, not until I make a settings file or something. Uh, changes of value can directly change the size of 2D elements. However, to provide an user accessible scaling option, use stretch scale as a blah 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 blah. Hang on. Oh my god, I hate this. This stupid screen setup I have to do for this. Okay, that's better. Ah! Right. I got there. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, where was I? Uh, uh the two, yeah, okay, didn't, uh, no, Godot follows the modern approach of mobile resolution of the engine. Whenever change the monitor resolution, I don't want to change the monitor resolution, the most efficient approach is all the less reliable. I should leave monitor, the second resolution, game crashes, this is, yeah, okay. Resizing, like, yeah, this is what San Andreas does, right? Like, it changes my desktop size and fucks all of my monitors up. And it's, yeah, kind of a problem. Yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> but modern games don't do that. Uh, resizing. There's several different types of ideas, different types of screens, which have a different pixels, then see resolutions handling. All of them could be a lot worse, so I'm going to try to make the developer life easier. The viewport node has several functions to handle resizing. The root node of the scene tree is always a viewport. Uh, scenes loaded are instances of child of it. You can always access by calling the get tree. Okay, so yeah, the, so. So the, the root tree of a node is always a viewport. So if we go to this, this is a viewport. I, I don't see viewport. Or is that canvas item, maybe? Oh, I guess I'm, I guess viewport would be the 3D one, right? Um, oh, best practices, 2D. Uh, okay, rendering, multiple resolutions. Yeah, okay. Uh, the viewport node has several functions to handle resizing. The root node of the scene tree is always a viewport scene loaded. So trying to be, uh, in any case, while changing the root full point of pro 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 params is probably the most flexible way to deal with the problem. It could be a lot work over and guessing. So go to project set parameters of the project system, handle model resolution. Stretch lane. Stretch has been changed again in the project resolution. Stretch. Disable. Ignore. One. Stretch mode. The stretch mode defines how the base size is stretched to fit the resolution of the window of the screen. The animations use a base size. The animations below. Oh, use a base size of just 26 by 9 pixels to demonstrate the effect of the stretch mode. There's a single sprite also 6 by 9 pixel size that covered the entire viewport and diagonal line of 2D as well. Yeah, okay. So that's disabled. So that that's what's happening now. That's what's happening, like what I explained, right? It was just like adding size to it. So stretch mode disable is not what I want. Stretch mode canvas items. In this mode, the base size specified in width and height of the... Yeah, so this isn't stretching it. The 16 by 9 stays a 16 by 9. 
Viewport scaling means that the size of the root viewport is set precisely to the base size specified in the project sensor play setting. The scene is rendered at this viewpoint first. Firstly, the, finally, the viewpoint is scaled to fit the screen, taking the stretch aspect into account. Right, okay, so... Okay, so canvas items. So that one will... That one will scale it to make it... The correct size. In this mode, the base size specified width height it produces the settings of the stretch cover. Yeah, okay, so this obviously makes a low resolution thing. So like the game is actually rendering in 16 by 9 pixels, like 16 pixels across 9 down. And then when you scale it, it's just stretching those 16 by 9 pixels, like 9p, let's say. It's stretching the 9p image to be bigger. Whereas if you use viewport, it's actually rendering the game at a higher resolution. Um, and just stretching it. Which, yeah, works for pixel stuff like that. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm not reading chat very much. It's like, the, my mom reading is over here, then I have another monitor, then chat's over here. <laughs> Okay, and then stretch aspect is, yeah, gonna make the aspect ratio stretch. So stretch aspect ignore. Ignore the aspect ratio when stretching the screen. This means that the original resolution will be stretched to exactly the screen. If it's wider or narrow, the result may be non for uniform stretching. Things looking wider or taller. Yeah, I don't want that. Stretch aspect keep. will keep the aspect ratio identical all the time. And then we have black bars. So that would be the simplest. So... Yeah, exactly, Omega. That's what I'm getting at here. That's why there's an entire support article dedicated to this. So... We don't want keep width, I don't... F well... I suppose keep width is... Fine as well. Or keep height, since mine game's portrait. And then expand is show. Oh, right. So, okay. This looks a little weird, but I understand what's happening. So, this black part, right, is black bars being added to the screen. The gray part is like you seeing the game beyond this image, right? The gray is like the background in Godot. So, the black bars are being artificially added so that you can't see any more. And then the gray part is like you can see more. So, if you, if you just expand this one... Nothing happens. What's the difference between expand and ignore? Oh, I see. Ignore lets you scale it in any way. Whereas ignore... Oh, sorry, expand keeps the game 16 by 9 still. So it doesn't let you ruin the aspect ratio, but then you can see beyond parts you're supposed to be able to see. So if you guys ever play like a flash game, like bigger than you're supposed to play it, and then you can like see like the game dev kept some stuff out of screen in the flash game... Uh, that's what's happening. This this last one is what's happening there. You're seeing beyond where you're supposed to be able to see. Oh man, I love debug flash buttons. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think if I just if I just use stretch aspect keep, so the game will always be sixteen by nine, and just use the viewport option. That will be the that's the simplest version of doing this because then I just make the game in 16 by 9 and fuck you you play with black bars right if you have the wrong aspect ratio um if I could add stuff to like have a infinitely expanding background I could use expand but the problem with expand here is it's adding it to one side hmm Whereas at least keep keeps the game in the center. Yeah. Uh, support both portrait and landscape mode of similar automatic determinants. So you say project based ready to be a square instead of a rectangle. What the fuck? No. <laughs> stretch scale allows you to add an extra scaling factor on top of what the stretch options already provided. The default value of 1 means no additional scaling because, for example, you set your scale of 2 and leave the stretch mode disabled. Each unit in your scene will be smaller. It's one of the 2 pixels on the screen. Ah, oh, okay. 
So yeah, you could have uh, you could have scaling options. So if you're making a pixel art game, I think I remember the game Chasm did this, and a bunch of other pixel art games. Like maybe um, probably uh, Shovel Knight does this, where like they make the game at like 480p or 240p or whatever, and then they just like use factor scaling, so they make it four times as big to make it 1080p or whatever the correct number there is for that, right? So then all the pixels are like still square. And the game is, like, made in low resolution, but it just, like, scales it, like, integer scaling. Um, it makes a really nice graphical style and just makes all of the pixels, like, larger. Um, but you don't have to, like, just draw everything with, like, a 4x4 four four pixel or whatever, right? you know. You just make actual pixel stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, so so I can, I can force integer scaling. I'm not making a pixel art game, so it's not really that important. If stretch mode is set to canvas items, common use case scenarios. Okay, right. Let's do. Oh yeah, let's see. Look, look. They have they have non pixel art and yes pixel art. That's like if you're making a pixel art game. <laughs> yeah, look, look, that's exactly what I just said. Look, set the base window size to the viewport size you intend to use. Most pixel art games use four point size between like two forty p and four eighty p. And then, yeah, then you stretch it. It's like literally what I just said. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, before I scroll down further, <laughs> exactly what I just said is written here. Um, <clears throat> That's desktop. Let's do mobile in landscape. Where's mo oh, okay, mobile in portrait. Ah, oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> Set the base window to 720. High end devices primarily set the base window to 1080. Okay. Um, this is a very good point, actually. These docs are chef kiss. Yeah, these, these this, I should be reading these. <laughs> this seems good. Um, yeah, okay, so, oops, I lost where I was. Uh, whoopsie. Here it is. So, they suggest you just make the game in 1080p, and even if... Even if your phone is 1440p, it's a fucking phone, so no one's going to tell the difference. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, I, I I agree. That's actually a really good point. So I, maybe I should just make the game in 1080 then. Um, but obviously, like, flipped. So, like, actually 920, but, you know, portrait. Oh, hey, thanks. Catalyst um, just resubscribed for 24 months. Mobiles have few different aspect ratios, like 18 by 9 and 9 by 19 by 9. Hello, you've just joined. <laughs> this is what I was already having an existential, ex is existential crisis about. I can't speak. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like written right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're going through it. Uh, note this will make non-min mapped textures grainy on low resolution devices. Okay. Set display window handheld orientation to portrait. I believe I did that. Set the stretch mode to canvas items. Set the stretch. Okay, we're, we're doing what it's telling us to do. Um, let's do this then. So. So mobile game in portrait. So we want to. Can I have my mouse please? Right, okay. F thank you whoever linked this by the way. I, I don't think I caught who linked it, but. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is exactly what I needed so much. I'm going to use these docs now. I have to search these docs. Viewport height. Yeah, 1920 by 1080. Um, we want... Handheld orientation set to portrait. We want stretch mode set to canvas items. We want the stretch aspect set to expand. Um, is it expand I want? That's the one where they could see everything. Um, I'll, I'm going to use expand for now, I suppose. Um, there's the scale thing we were talking about. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to use fractional or integer. We're not going to scale anything. Uh, configure control nodes anchors to snap to the correct corners using the layout menu. Right. Okay. So. The better sport tablets and foldable phones, which frequently display feature displays with aspect ratios close to 4x3, you consider using a base resolution that's a 3x4 aspect ratio while following the rest of the instructions here. For instance, you can set your base window width to 960 and the base window height to 7. Do 
I want to make the game in 4x3? If I make the game in 4x3, it works better on tablets and foldable phones. It would work better on desktop. But obviously, 4x3 is like... It would take up like a tiny... No, it would look really shit on like actual mobiles. Nah, I, I really want to just target... I just want to make a mobile game. <laughs> just a simple mobile game. Uh, sorry, I'm reading the rest of this article quick. Yeah, there's some more stuff at the bottom. Okay, right, okay. So, cr it, crisis averted, this is what we're going to do. The only problem is, yeah, it's still a pain in the ass to display this on PC for, like, testing purposes. Okay, right. So, <laughs> we've got that running. The next probably extremely painful thing to do is to export something to my phone to test it with. Because um, I just want to see, I just, th th there's no point continuing if I can't get this to export to mobile, right? So yeah, good luck with that lol. Yeah, yeah, so this is going to be the extremely painful part where I now try to export to Android. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's try to export to Android. Let's look at the manual. Maybe it's in the manual. Uh, assets pipeline, migrating, editor instructions, best practices. Try to ask GPT. It doesn't know anything about Godot 4. It only knows Godot 3. Uh, let's just search Android, but spelt right. Android. Uh, oh, I'm not using 4.1. How do I change version? I'm using 4.2. Yeah, I want the latest version. Yeah, 4.2. Okay, that's better, right? Uh, Android. Yeah, I'm trying to export the... Oh, here we go. Ignore it that it says you can't. Oh, okay. Is this... Yeah, because this is 4.1. That's why. 4.2 documentation, exporting to Androids. Projects written in C Sharp using Godot 4.0 cannot be... Yeah, you, you can, right? Because that's why specifically I'm using 4.2 Dev 5, is because you can export to Android here. Uh... Sorry. Right, okay, so this is the article I need. Um, so install open JDK 11. Okay. Oh yeah, I could use an emulator as well. That would also be useful. But I just, I, I just want to verify the entire, like, asset pipeline before I continue, right? Like I need to, or export pipeline, or whatever. Like there's no point continuing if I can't get this to work on mobile. Because it would just be a waste of time. Uh, right, install open JDK 11. Okay, god, I haven't used JDK for 10 billion years. Uh, JDK, I don't want a tar.gz. Oh god. No, not Linux. Where's, where's Windows? Windows. Uh, it came out 29th of August. That seems up to date. Uh, JDK dot MSI will do me. Whatever, just install the bloody thing. Okay, thank you for the help so far, chat. You've been very helpful. <laughs> like, actually very helpful. <laughs> like, okay, my, my my ability to search things would be improved if I wasn't streaming, because I have a bunch of shit open on my screens and everything, but... But then also just having a bunch of people to search stuff for me is very useful. Uh, right, are there any specific installation things I require here? It just says open and inst download and install OpenJDK at 11. So, path associate.jar, uh, set Java home variable, Oracle registry keys. I, I'm just going to use the default settings, I think. We're just going to use default everything. Just the default JDK. I hope this works. I probably still have a JDK installed, an ancient version from 10 years ago, probably somewhere. I hope that doesn't fuck this installation up. 
Okay, let's read the rest of the instructions. Um, let me put this on this screen so you can actually see what I'm reading. Um, actually, hold on. Is that even... Ah! Uh. Oh my god, I'm doing so many wrong things right now. Please. Please stop. Okay, there we go. Christ. And then that, and then that, and then that, and then you can see it. Okay, sorry, I know the stream's kind of rough here. Right. Open JDK, and it, sorry, install it. Yeah, done. Installed. Download the Android SDK. Download and install the Android SDK. You can install the Android SDK using Android Studio version 4.1 or later. Okay, we're, we're going in. I'm going to download the Android Studio. Uh, get the official integrated development IDE. Oh, God, I have to fucking install an entire IDE for this. Okay, oh God, yes. Great, I earned a badge. Y yippee. Did it, is it downloading? Yes, it is. Okay, thank fuck for that. Okay. No, read below for option two. Alternatively, you can install the Android SC. Oh, <sighs> Not installing the entire Android SD like IDE for this shit. Uh, right. Alternatively, you can install the Android SDK using the command line tools. Uh. Once the command line tools are installed, run the SDK manager command to complete the setup process. Oh god, okay, so command line tools. Uh, it just takes me to the same page. This isn't command line tools. Command line tools only, right? I scroll down enough, I can see it. Uh, Windows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Accept all of your terms, Google. You already own my soul. I'm a YouTuber. Just fucking let me do it. Uh, right, we're doing this. Okay, we're going to extract a window this. Uh, file, extract to. I know you can't see anything I'm doing. Just give me a minute. I don't like showing my file system. I don't know. Uh... Uh, install Android using the command line tools, right? I I downloaded a thing. Where do I? How do I install this? Chat help. I have a folder called command line tools. There's source dot properties, notice dot text, and a bin and a lib. How does one use this? There's a bin with a bunch of bat files in it. <laughs> There's a lib with a billion things in it. Notice.txt is just a bunch of copyright, you know, legal shit. <sighs> there used to be a normal installer when I last needed it. Add slash bin to path system environment variable. Sure, those are words. Oh, here we go. Download the latest command line tools only package from the Android Studio downloads page and unzip the package. Move the unzipped command line tools directory to the new directory of your choice, such as Android SDK. The new directory is your Android SDK directory. Right, okay. I need to make an Android SDK directory. Uh, new folder, Android SDK. Okay, I have made a directory. Uh, oh, oh, don't do that. Uh, download the latest... 
Uh, I guess you can see this. Uh, uh, download the thing, download the latest package, did that. Move the unzipped command line tools directory into a new directory. Yep, Android SDK. This is now directory to Android SDK directory. This new directory, sorry, yep, okay. Uh, in the unzipped command line tools directory, create a subdirectory called latest. In the unzipped command line tools directory, make a new directory called latest. Uh, move the original command line tool directory components, including the lib directory, bin directory, notice tucked file, and into the newly created latest directory. Right, okay. Move those into latest. Okay, this seems unnecessary. Move the original, blah, 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 blah. I just did that. You can now use the command line tools from this location. Optional to install previous versions of command line. What? Usage. You can now use the SDK management. Blah, blah, blah. How? What? So I just open a command line window here? Do I just open command line in latest and just start typing things? The Godot docs tell you what to do next. Once the command line tools are installed, run the SDK manager command. Okay, I'm just gonna, like, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to go to latest in my Windows Explorer. I'm going to open a command, a PowerShell window and type the letters CMD and press enter. I'm going to paste this and press enter and it's not going to work. There you go, right. So now, <laughs> can we figure out what I actually need to do with this? <laughs> right, exactly what I thought was gonna happen happened. CD bin then run. All right, so, so it needs to be within the the bin folder. Okay, right. So, bin folder, PowerShell window, CMD. We're in command line. Paste. The system cannot find the file specified. So, CD bin didn't work. Try putting dot slash at the start. That's not a command line prompt. It quite literally is. If you type CMD, you now start typing command line prompts. It, it quite literally is a command line prompt. <laughs> The command is a thing you need to edit. The system cannot find the file specified. Uh, SDK root equal Android SDK path. Right, so we need... Ah, oh, Jesus. Notepads. SDK root equals... So we need... Uh, where the fuck is it? We need this, and it needs to be just Android SDK. Right, copy this, paste. Why can't I paste? Hello? Thank you. Access is denied. <clears throat> right, okay, progress. Okay, so I need to run it as admin. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. <clears> hmm, <throat> uh, let's just run an actual CMD window and as admin and we'll just CD over there CD to here That didn't work <laughs> I hate everything <sighs> Remove the thingy from the path Command. Paste. Error. Linkage error occurred while loading main class com blah blah blah. For more recent blah 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 blah. Error. Linkage error occurred while loading main class com android sdk lib tool sdk manager sdk manager cli j 
Java unsupported class version error com has been compiled by a more recent version of the Java runtime. Class file version 61. This version of the Java runtime only recognizes class versions of 55, so I need to update my Java runtime. Okay. Her uh, baby. <laughs> Alright. Java. <laughs> do, do, I, do I... Isn't there... I don't want the Oracle one, do I? I want the open... Uh, j j uh, open j JDK is the one I want. Uh, you downloaded the JDK, but did you install it? That should fix it. Did you not already download a JDK? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> ah, mouse. Okay. I downloaded the Android SDK. I did not, not install Java. Download and o install Open JDK 11. Yeah, didn't I do that? Didn't we, like, literally watch me do that? Yeah, what? Wait, what? I literally did that. Yeah, and then I said, while it's downloading, what do I do next, didn't I? Right, while it was downloading, what do I do next? Right, I didn't actually... Right. <laughs> I never actually installed it, did I? I downloaded it. You're, you're, you guys are right. Yeah, that was literally the first step of the fucking process. <laughs> oh my god, what would I be doing without chat right now? Okay, let's see. Uh, downloads. This is not ordered by age for some reason. Open JDK. Run. Right, there we go. Yeah, sorry. Open JDK. Uh, it's installed. It's telling me to change it, remove, repair it, remove it. Open JDK. The open the latest version of Open JDK is JDK twenty one. I have eleven installed. <laughs> yeah, I need to install a much newer version. What? 11, 17, and 21 are long-term support. Right. I'm just going to install 21 and we're going to see what happens. Let's remove this. Uh, 21 was released two days ago. Perfect. <laughs> I'm sure this will cause no errors whatsoever. Yeah, before 21 is too new. Should I do 17? <laughs> Open JDK 17. Let's do that. <laughs> Where do I actually get it from? Doesn't this link like adopt adoptium.net? Yeah. This does link to adoptium.net. And open G if I replace the eleven with seventeen in the URL, this works. Okay, perfect. I got there. Alright. Windows X64. Uh yes. 
Uh, JDK MSI. Download. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Alright, I'm gonna install JDK 17. <laughs> okay, alright. Yes, run. Okay, alright, alright, alright. Progress, progress, progress. Uh, yeah, next. Install all the default settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is the thing I said I was installing with all the default settings, yeah. Is the fucking Godot docs wrong and you need a newer version? You can't use JDK 11, you need to use JDK 17. Someone needs to open an issue with the docs. Can I show the error again? Uh, with some efforts, but... I've installed a new version of the thing now, so... Probably won't, it's not gonna give an error, right? It's just gonna work. Oh! We did it! Hooray! Yeah, I accept everything. Do it, Google. Take my soul. Alright, JDK 17 works. Oh my word. Okay. Whoo! Alright, it's downloading. Oh, I, I... Is it downloading? Do I need to accept again? No, yeah, no, it's, it's downloading. It's just hanging. And not working. And doing nothing. At 25%? Okay, no, it's moving. It's moving. Give it a moment. Give it a minute! I think you paused it. Press escape. That seems like the exact opposite button to what I want to press in this situation. <laughs> I don't think I want to press escape at all. I, I think I just want to not touch it. It's going up! It's going up. I'm not pressing anything. Right, let's continue. Uh... Oop. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Right, okay. Uh, you can install the Android SDK. Right, okay. I'm I'm installing the Android SDK. That is happening. Note, if you're using Linux, do not use an Android SDK provided by a distribution's repositories, as it will be often outdated. Get fucked. There's a pull request for this, yeah? Ah, nice, nice research, Gogsy. So there's a pull request. Update the Android documentation from Godot 4.2. Nice. What else is wrong? Can I... Can I view this person's version of the doc? If this person's fixed the doc... I want to read their fixed version. How do I read their fixed version? <laughs> uh huh. See the commits in the pull request? I did that, and then there's a commit, and then it's like all of the changes in like raw... Like, I want to just open the page, right? <laughs> I don't want to, like, sit here and read all the differences. I want it to open in a nice, user-friendly website page, just like the actual docs do. <laughs> You'd have to run the page. Right. Oh! Things are happening over here. D did it happen? I think it happened. Okay. Alright, we're getting somewhere. Progress. Yeah, page needs to be built. Yeah, okay, alright. Fuck. Baby. Well, when was this done? This was two weeks ago. Guys, get on it. What music is this? It's Castlevania, right? Super Castlevania? 
No, it's a rainbow castle in Mario Party, apparently. I don't know how accurate that is. Yeah, I'm listening to Rainwave, by the way. Let me link it. That's what I'm listening to right now. Um, I don't know if my page is just bugged out. No, because now we're listening to something completely different. It says Rainbow Castle Mario Party. Hey, at Joshmas, why aren't you using the stable version? Because the stable version doesn't support Android outputting with C Sharp. That's not a feature in 4.1 or 4.0. I would have to use Godot 3. Point something if I wanted to use that, but I kind of wanted to use the new version of Godot because that's the one everyone's hyped about. Um, and uh, yeah, and hopefully 4.2 will probably come out before I finish this project, right? So hopefully it's okay. But I, I yeah, I want to use C Sharp and I want to output to Android. <laughs> So if I want both these things, I need the latest version of the thing, right? Hello, Aino. Okay, right. So... I, presuming that these instructions are correct, which apparently they're not because the GitHub says they're not, but I can't read the GitHub updated ones, so that's great. Uh, I've installed the Android SDK. Um, if we run into issues, we can try to figure out from that pull request, I guess. If you're using... Right, okay, let me... So, I now need to... So, I have done this. Presumably, this has now worked. Um, I'm just gonna... We're gonna assume that that's good, and it's in the correct place. Um, what SDK do you use for .NET? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> V v Visual Studio? Does that count? Uh, create a debug.key store. Android needs a debug key store file to install to devices to and distribute non-release APKs. If you have used the SDK before and have built projects, Ant or Ep Eclipse probably generated one for you. Uh, no. Pro I, I would have one from several, several, several years ago, but not now. Um, if you can't find it or need to generate one, the key tool command from the JDK can be used for this pros pur purpose. So, key tool... Okay. This will create a debug.keystore file in your current directory. You should move it to a memorable location, such as user profile Android, because you will need its location in a later step. Okay. Let's take this. Um, I presume putting this here will work. Look at that. Generating something. Hooray! Generated a thing. Okay. And it put it... Here. Good. I will put it... Here. <laughs> okay, lovely. Um. <sighs> okay, I generated the thing. It is important that the password is the same for the key store and the key. Oh shit, was there a password I was supposed to? Oh, key pass. It's just Android. Store pass, Android. Were those passwords I needed to type in? Right, I'll just leave it as Android for now. It's okay. Hopefully no one hacks me, smiley face. Or whatever the problem here is. <laughs> I guess, like, I could be impersonated, right? On the Play Store or whatever. Um, it is important that the password... Yeah, okay. I'm only using the debug one. I'm sure I'll remember to change this when I publish the game, smiley face. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's only the debug one. Yeah, it's okay. Setting up in Godot. Enter the editor settings screen. This screen contains the editor settings for the user account on the computer. It's independent of the project. Okay. Scroll down to the section where the Android settings are located. In that screen, two paths need to be set. The Android SDK path and the key store. Once that's configured, everything is ready to export to Android. Oh, baby. Here we go. All right. Okay. So. Whoops. Uh. 
editor. Editor settings. Uh... Output? No, where was it? Is it just run itself? I can't click on run. Export. Android. Surely it's here. Okay. SDK path. Oh, Christ. Okay, it was... Uh... Why can't you just open this in fucking Windows, guys? That's the path. Debug store. Right there. <sighs> Debug key store user. What is what was the user? Android debug key. Yep. And the key pass was Android. Yep. I hate programs having their own fi own inferior file explorers. I know, right? I don't know why they do that. I guess because Linux doesn't have file explorer, maybe. Um, uh, scroll down to the section of the Android settings. Okay, yeah, shut down. Oh, there's even more. One click deploy clear previous install. Use Wi-Fi for remote debug. Ooh, that sounds fun. We'll worry about that later. On that screen, two paths need to be set. Yep, yep, yep. One size configure everything. Okay, no, if you get an error saying could not install the device, make sure you have verification of the hand drive package already already installed. If you have the application, never the same. Okay. Providing launcher icons. Launcher icons are used by Android launcher applications to represent applications to users. Could only requires higher administration. Does it not have a default icon? Remote debug sucks balls constantly disconnects from me at least. Wi-Fi, I mean, right, okay. Do I have to make an iPhone? Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't need to I don't need to provide an icon just to test it, okay. Exporting for Google Play Store. No no no, I just literally <laughs> I just want the APK on my phone. I have fucking developer settings on my phone. I can just run APKs. Okay, well, I mean, I guess this is the thing most people want to do. Uh, uploading an APK to Google's Play Store requires you to sign using non DB because. Uh, right, maybe I just need to press the export button. Is there an export button? Export. Install Android build template. Target platform requires texture compression. Enable. Okay. Exporting to Android using s is experimental. No export template found at the expected path. No export template found at the expected path. Manage export templates. Da download and install. This music's nice, at least. <laughs> yeah, so today, pretty much all I'm going to be doing today, probably, is getting my, uh, what is it called, dev environment? Something like that. I'm just getting, like, the actual, all of the tools to work before I start building, right? So this is what today's going to be. <clears throat> Why would you stop at 99%? Why put 4.2 beta and not presumably bug free 4.1? Because you can't export to Android in 4.1. <laughs> 440... 434 people? 38 people? That's a lot more than I was thinking. Thanks, guys. Hello. <laughs> right, done. Uh, export. Invalid package name. The project name does not meet the requirement for the package name format please explicitly specify the package name package name
name. Is that the package name? Custom template. Export path. Packaged package name needs to be something like com .game. Okay. Package name. Ah, here. It's in, it's, he hi helpfully highlighted it in yellow for me so I could fucking see it. There we go. Why do I hear boss music? Okay, alright. Uh, this can now apparently export. Uh, export project. APK. Go. Oh my god, it's working. Oh my god, things are happening. Oh my god, I might have a fucking APK yet. I need to plug my phone in. Huh. Boop, 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 boop. Also, my phone was dying anyway. Uh, file transfer. Oh baby, I have so many more copyright claims. Oh, I guess to do was doing YouTube things. <laughs> uh, oh my god, did this just work? Wow. Okay. Y yo, did this like just work, bruv? Oh my god, there it is. There's there's the AD APK. It's right there. Look. Okay, let's uh, copy this and uh, put it on my phone. Uh, to just put it in download, I'll be able to find it from there. Paste. Oh, you're right, I could use ADP, couldn't I? What am I fucking doing? What am I doing with my life? <laughs> right, I could use that. Never mind. Okay, it's on my phone. I know you guys can't see any of this, but, like, please. <laughs> uh, files. Downloads. Blockriskado.apk. There it is. Installing. Install. Unsafe app blocked. No. Install anyway. It was installed. Open. Game engine turned on. Hooray! It worked! <laughs> Look, here, here it is. It says, hi chat. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> okay, good. That was one thing I was really worried about, because I know it wasn't until, like, Godot 4.2 Dev 3 where this was possible at all. Um, so the fact that this works is a fucking Christmas miracle. Okay, beautiful. Well done, Godot devs. Well fucking done. Um, what do you guys see on the right-hand side here? What the hell? <laughs> the layout is, like, kind of scuffed at the moment for some reason. You see this window twice, I don't know why. Okay, right. The game... Exports to phone. I can make an APK. Doesn't apply to any, uh, like, doesn't function with any of the rules, but I have exported a game to the Google Play Store before. So I'm sure I could do it again. But that all works. Ugh, oh, what a miracle. Okay. Hooray! And then this still works. Beautiful. And then I can move it to this monitor, and then I have to use the other monitor, and then I can drag it down. Hooray! And then, this will definitely capture this. What? Why is it not? Yeah, that one. Title must match. Okay, there we go. There we go, right, and that's the actual game. <sighs> Where is the gameplay? My dude. <laughs> You have no idea how much of a weight off my shoulders it is to have the fucking... It it runs on PC, and it runs on mobile. Both of these things work. Ugh, oh, it's a miracle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now what? 
there's only one more thing I need to get working, and that's pushing this to... Um, GitHub. That's the only other thing I need to do, is push this to GitHub. Um, so, we want block risk of dough. Yeah, so we... What, what do we want to be pushed here? What do we want to ignore? Um... I'd make a very basic script to make sure .NET works, to be honest. Oh, okay, sure. Um, let's do that. Uh, script. New script. Language. C sharp. Uh, inherit Sprite2D. Class name. Sure. Template. Yep. Built-in script. Path. We'll call it test.cs create why did this open here i absolutely do not want this to open here how do i N no please i made a c sharp solution already how do i get this to automatically open correctly i'll create version control metadata Version control settings. No VCS plugins are available for this project. It's all a VCS plugin to use VCS integration features. Visual Studio Code. External editor. Okay, thank you, Goxy. Thank, thank you for just feeding me all of these help pages. Editor, editor settings, text editor external. Thank you. Editor settings. Editor... A uh, text editor. External. Use external. Uh, path. But do you not? Can you not just? Not this. You need the one under dot net. What? My bad. Dot net is separate. Yeah. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Where? <laughs> editor settings dot net external editor. Dot net editor. Aha. Uh, Visual Studio. Oh my god, who uses Mono Develop? Oh my god. Who uses that? <laughs> no. Visual Studio. Close. Okay, do I need to give it the path though? Does that not just... Does that not just work on its own? Uh, Linux uses me? You did? I remember having to use it in uni for a bit because we didn't have Visual Studio installed, but that was fucking... Shit, that was so bad. Uh, so I need to give it the path. Um, oh god, where the fuck is my Visual Studio installed? <laughs> More? XPath is only for custom. Oh, is it? Oh, custom except- oh. I see, right, okay. So if I close this... Uh, save and close. G get out of here. What? Oh, fuck it. No! 2D. There we go. And then... Ah, shit. <laughs> Open this. Okay, there we go. I got there. Right. And now I want to edit this text. Oh, it opened. Oh, yes. Okay, look at that. Oh, my God. Thank fuck for that. Okay. Ready. Uh, called every frame. Process. Okay, right. Uh, puz, puz. Po 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 position. Okay, it's not that simple, is it? Um, this dot posit. Nope. Uh, <laughs> hmm. You can see nothing in the VS. Yeah. Okay. Well, the layout needs work. All right. But 
Um, how do I make that better? Because it's really tall. I don't know how I'm supposed to... I, I, I could zoom, obviously. Um, but what's the default zoom right now at? I don't want to zoom until I know what the, the this zoom is so I can reset it. Uh... Where, uh... Okay, chat, tell me where the zoom settings are. <laughs> Bottom left, above windows. Oh, this? Oh, shit. Oh, okay, that little tiny thing down there. Okay, is that... No, you need more than that, don't you? That's readable, right? 200% readable for you? Yeah, I can control press scroll, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, right, anyway, process. Uh, sprites. Okay, what do we have? How do I... How do I do anything? <laughs> or are we... Do we not... Does it not have IntelliSense or whatever working? I don't think it has IntelliSense working. No, these are all just... Oh my god. Chat, does Godot not support IntelliSense? <laughs> Did you click the Generate C Sharp Solution thing? Yes, that's what I have open. I guess I could try reopening it. Um... I did make a solution. That is what I, I did. I did. I went project tools, C sharp, create C sharp solution. I did that. It's already been done. I promise. I promise I did it. <laughs> Let's try to open the script again. Okay. Visual Studio is opening again. Yeah, like, if I mouse over ready and process, I don't get anything. Position, and now you can't see it because OBS is a piece of shit that won't fucking recapture anything. Fucking recapture it. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Okay, alright. Yeah, like... It's like, I can't mouse over any of these things, so it's not working. Yeah, I'm using, uh, I'm using Visual Studio 2019, if that matters. Is that too out of date or something? Ah. I'll make another, I'll make a C-Sharp solution again. Tools, C-Sharp, generate, create, create. Okay, done. Oh, you might need 2022. Okay. Look at if Visual Studio sees the entire project. Well, I d I d uh, open. Okay, it's coming again. And fucking OBS again refuses to capture it. Even though it's called exactly the same thing. <laughs> That's okay. Hopefully I don't need to restart this that many times. Yeah, there's like no IntelliSense stuff at all. Ah. Uh. Bah. Hmm. Hmm. Are you opening the individual? I am opening it by clicking in Godot. I'm clicking on the script. Which I would hope would work. But I guess I could try to open the actual... Like, yeah, it doesn't seem to... It has the solution. It says solution down here. It sees the dependencies. 
Packages, Godot Sharp, it sees all of that stuff. Analyzers. Dependencies have warning marks, which is probably the issue. Oh yeah, right, it does. Scope to this. Okay, I didn't mean to do that, that's bad. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there's a whole document on setting up- Oh my god, there's a whole document on setting up the entire fucking workflow, which I've just been doing. When you create the first C-sharp script, go to initialize the C-sharp project of your good files project. The script is C-sharp, so the project file, some Unity file, uh, all of these, but Godot Mono and important. should be the major the virtual control skipper and everything under good.co to go save the added to the ignore of your ver uh oh okay. Version control solution. Okay, so system so everything under dot Godot can be ignored in GitHub. That's very useful. I'm gonna do that right now actually. While I remember this. So everything in dots There's nothing in there. Okay, fine. Can you right click solution and restore nougat at a guess? Right click. Add project reference, add shared product reference, add com reference, manage connected services, manage nougat packages, remove unused references, new solution explore review are my options. I mean, I could just try opening the solution in like just double click the solution and Right, here's the here's the C Oh that's not that's the C sharp project file, not the, the Visual Studio solution I'm opening. Whoops. Wait, hold on. Visual Studio Solution. Right, okay. Okay. Yeah, dependencies. Restore nougat packages is grayed out. What I use to solve colon space colon space zero dot. I ensure that there is a folder opened in VS Code. I'm using Visual Studio. <laughs> so that's your first mistake. Uh, let's just have a look, Google. Godot. Vi vi Visual Studio 2019. Same goes for Studio. Oh, okay. Ensure there's a folder opened in VS Code, which contains the script I want to edit. In this case, it's the root of your project. Every time I start a project, I ensure all extensions have loaded successfully and I use the command palette of VS Code and restart the editor. What? F1. That just brings up a help thing. Oops, no F1 match. Help was found. Ah. I found the C Godot C Sharp extension for Visual Studio. Requirements. Visual Studio 2022, VS 2019 or earlier are not supported. Okay. <laughs> v Visual Studio Code 2022. Is this still free? Oh my god, please tell me I don't have to pay for this. Ooh, it has GitHub Copilot. Ooh. <laughs> um, download a Community 2022 works, right? That's the one I want. Is there 2023? Oh my god. No, there isn't 2023. 2022 is the latest. Oh, hey, thanks. Carl Townsend just resubscribed for 42 months. Thanks, Carl, for 42 months. Hello. How's it going? I guess in this instance, 
Visual Studio Code would be better because I don't need Visual Studio's all of its building stuff. I literally just need the code writing stuff. Do I want to try Visual Studio Code? There's such a cult following behind it. I don't really understand fully what the difference is. Perhaps I want to try cut. Do I have Visual Studio Code installed actually? I, I might do. Faye the other day, I managed to get her interested in programming and she wanted to try doing some JavaScript stuff and she downloaded Visual Studio Code all on her own and was starting to use it. I forgot about that. I do have Visual Studio Code installed. Right, of course I use it to edit DWOM files. <laughs> Uh, you could try it, but may have to install plugins and stuff. That's okay. I think I know how to do this. So extensions. If I search Godot, Godot s tools. I already have this installed. Oh, I think I was. Is it Godot dash tools or is it C sharp tools for Godot? Which one is it? Which one do I need? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Take all of them, Josh? Oh, okay, I'll install all of them. I thought they would like conflict or something. The second, but docs say it's not updated for four. Ah. Oh. Okay, we're using Visual Studio. <laughs> so does does the what does it work with Visual Studio? Or is is it only Visual Studio code that's fucked right now? <laughs> like uh, am I just fucked either way? Oh, man. Wrong, Kobim. I literally... <laughs> ta tabs into game that just installed on his phone. Look, I've already exported to Android. You can with, vis you can with version 4.2. <laughs> For Godot 4.2 Dev 5. You can export to Android. With VS Code, you should be able to get IntelliSense only with base C Sharp extension. Right, okay. Okay. V v Visual Studio Code. Okay, right, here we go. I'm going to manage extensions. I'm going to search Godot. And I'm going to uninstall both of these. Okay. Then I'm going to search C Sharp. And we get C Sharp Def Kit, official Microsoft. Or do I want C Sharp? Official C Sharp extension from Microsoft. Or do I want base language support? No, I want I want the extension, right? I want both. Okay, we're installing. Do, do, do. Right, C Sharp Dev Kit is installing. It's official Microsoft thing, so... I hope this works. Done. Okay, right. So, <laughs> we're going to go back to Godot. We're going to go Editor, Editor Settings. We're going to say Visual Studio Code. I am now officially one of those people. And now I'm going to try to open this. And it's going to open in VS Code. And I'm going to press enter and I'm going to type position and it doesn't work. <sighs> and it doesn't work. So wait, I'm going to scroll up. <clears throat> Who said it? Who said it would work? Which one of you said it would work? I'm, I can't find the message anymore. <laughs> with VS Code, you should be able to get IntelliSense only with base C-sharp extension. Alright, Geordi, you're on the naughty step. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> ah! Okay. 
ban him. No, come on. People are trying to help. It's alright. I know OBS ain't capturing Visual Studio Code. You know, I'm just gonna fucking download Visual Studio 22. I, 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 I need Visual Studio more than I need VS Code to work. VS Code is really nice, but I'm, I'm just gonna get Visual Studio Community 22. Like, whatever. By learning it, like, Arco, I think you're vastly overestimating the amount of effort that was put into this. She once installed the thing because she was interested several months ago. <laughs> like, I think you're getting a little ahead of yourself. Do -do -do -do. I think it was Python, actually, not JavaScript, right? I don't remember. I had nothing to do with it. I just came home one day and I saw it on her desktop and I was like, Oh, what are you doing in VS Studio Code? But I think that was a mistake and me noticing it made it so she didn't do it. <laughs> Uh, right, okay. I have Visual Studio Community 2022. Uh, I want... Oh god, I need to set this up for Botimus as well. I want .NET. All of the .NET stuff. Uh, and the C Sharp stuff. The C++ stuff. I don't want Unity, fuck off. Um... And I want ASP.NET web development, I think, because that's all the hate like the other stuff. I don't want Node.js, I don't want Python. Okay, individual components. Oh, that's a lot. Um Yeah, that's a lot. Language packs, no English UK, installation locations. Sure, that's probably fine. Oh, my C drive is so... I have 57 gigabytes left on my C drive, shit. This is 26 gigabytes?! Jesus fucking Christ. Wait, untick everything. Okay, now it's one gigabyte. <laughs> what the fuck is 20 odd gigabytes? Oh, the .NET multi-platform app UI development is... <laughs> right, now I want... I don't want... No, I, I want I want Windows Forms. That's like six gigabytes. That's okay. I want Windows Forms and console applications using C sharp. Yeah, that's what I need for Botimus. Um, I'm sure I can install this stuff later, right? Like this is fine. Right, install. Go. Right, downloading. Okay, we're downloading it. Right, in the meantime, while we get IntelliSense set up, all I wanted to do was every frame move the fucking image to the right to make sure it works. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to do, but I couldn't, there was no IntelliSense. I can't program about IntelliSense. I need that crutch, dude. <laughs> What is the project chat? Watch the beginning of the stream on comma Raskan. <laughs> Find the part of the stream where I explain what the project is. I know that's a shit answer, but it's the only way this is going to work, really. Alright, let's clean up the stuff I have open a little bit. Um, did I wave? I open... I open a video game. I open an old version of the game, Raskin, so you should be able to find that. And what DDM said is wrong. <laughs> I'm making a mobile Godone version of an XNA game of a Game Boy Advance game. <laughs> you missed a step. <laughs> oh dear. It's around five minutes into the stream. Is it five minutes into the stream? I thought it was further in than that. But okay, fair enough. Five minutes in is easy to find. Yeah, there you go. I don't care about that step, that doesn't make me wrong, yeah. Sorry, I should be making it so you can see my uh, downloading right now. Uh, let's add... Uh, this. There you go. Re we be downloading though. <laughs> oh hey look, it's got Visual Studio Community 2019 on this list as well. Okay, so if I still have that installed, that'd be fine, I guess.
launched. It's almost downloaded at least. It's downloading faster than it's installing, so I think we're alright. We're, we're almost done. Speed. Hooray, downloaded. Okay, good. We're going. It's installing. Woo! Right, so, wait. Do I need... Does this just work? Like, if I open this in c -shot, If I open this in Visual Studio, is it just going to work? Or do I need to install some other thing now? By the way, you can hide the OBS window in any capture. It's only a checkbox. I know. I, I don't want to hide it. I like dragging OBS onto the, the, the itself sometimes. There's nothing bad being shown in OBS. I mean, if Visual Studio Community 22 works, I might as well uninstall 2019, right? But I'll do that later. It be it do be installing though. Do I have water while it's happening? I do. Yeah, yeah, SA is surely gonna be broken for some reason now, right? Next time I open San Andreas, it's just gonna crash. <laughs> or or I'm gonna fall over at the start or something, right? Oh shit, I'm still running the game on my phone. Let's just not do that. I, I'm pretty sure it's V-Sync, so it shouldn't be draining my battery super hard at least. Oh, maybe I should have got a snack or something while this was happening. <laughs> Wait, why did I make it so you couldn't see it anymore? What am I doing? Anyway. Mmm, Halo music. Mmm. I like Halo music. You miss Visual Studio? What do you use now? Stuck using Eclipse? Oh, jeez. Uh, I think I used Eclipse once many, many years ago when I was making Ouya stuff. That was so shit. I fucking... Yeah, everyone in the chat's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> While we're doing this, chat, I can tell you about the bike uh, I'm hopefully buying tonight, if it's any good. Um, yeah, I need to end the stream at it about 4pm. Um, because I need to then make dinner and clean up before Faye gets home. Then I'm gonna eat dinner, and then I'm gonna go and look at a bike. It's a, like, um, how do I how do I do this without accidentally showing bad things? Uh, for a guy, yeah, the, the, I did get ghosted by a bike guy. I have another bike now. Uh, how do I show this without doxing anyone, including myself? Uh, I can just search the bike model. Uh, that'll do. Um, this is some random person's picture, but uh, that, that's what the bike is. Uh, oh wow, this this one's. Oops, I can't remember my mouse over there. This one's scuffed up a bit. This isn't the actual bike. This is the same model. But uh, wow, thank you, Sir Soft. I had no fucking idea. Oh my god. If one other person tells me that, I'm gonna fucking explode. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, uh, it doesn't have this tires on it, I don't think mine either, but it's like a, it's a, called a Holdsworth Mystique. <laughs> it's like black and orange. It's like, yeah, black with like little orange stripes and stuff on it. Looks stolen. This is just a random picture I found on the internet. It's not this one. 
It's just a random one I found. But it's a it's a full carbon fiber bike. So previously my old bike was it had an aluminium frame and a carbon fiber fork. Um, but this one's full carbon fiber. Um, it has uh, it has lots of mounting points for front and rear panniers, which is important to me because I want to go bike packing. It has a, a very relaxed road frame, so it's a gravel bike or whatever. Um, because that's what I want, because there's lots of bikes out there that are like racing bikes, where your ass is higher than your fucking head. Um, but, uh, but I don't want that. I want like a relaxed frame where I'm like sat upright more. Um, and yeah, it's, it needs to be like an all-terrain thing. It's, it's a gravel bike, as they're called. But I, I say it's an endurance road bike. Um, but it needs, yeah, it needs to be all-terrain, because that's always what I wanted to do with the bike. My old one as well. So it's one of those. It's got the, all the pannier mounts. Um, this one, funnily enough, has the front derailleur installed, whereas mine doesn't. The one I'm getting doesn't have a front derailleur, so it only has a 1x at the front and not a 2x. But it does have the mounting points for the front derailleur. So I can put a, a new front derailleur on it, and I will do. Um, but that's going to be quite a job. But... But then I can have a two-speed plus the all the gears at the back. This has like less gears as well. This is a different model, different. This one has different gear gear set. Oh, this is an Altegra apparently. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, carbon fiber. That thing must be so lightweight. Yeah, I know, right? The the bike itself, I think, weighs like nine kilograms, <laughs> like in total. Um, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm gonna go look at it. The thing is with carbon fiber. Is that if it breaks, it fucking breaks, right? <laughs> like, if the bike snaps as I'm riding it, I will literally die. Because the bike will impale me with sharp, broken carbon fiber, and I'll go flying off of it, right? So buying a second-hand one is a little monkeress, but it's not impossible. But I just need to be very thorough with my inspection of it, make sure there's no cracks, no scratches... Because if, if they've crashed the bike, and the bike's integral integrity is weakened, and then I start riding it off-road on gravel and stuff, and the bike fucking snaps and shards of it go everywhere. If you've ever seen a Formula 1 car crash, you know, that, sh that shit gets everywhere. Um, yeah, because carbon fiber is like, it's like brittle like plastic, but with the strength of like steel, right? Like, <laughs> so it will fucking kill you, right? So, gotta be careful. Um, but if all goes well, the bike was well taken care of and it looks all like that, all good and stuff. Um, then I'm gonna get it. Um, it's a, yeah, 2018 Holdsworth Mystique. Um, 2018's like, you think of like from a tech point of view, that's like ancient, right? Like, you're buying a thing that's 2018, but for a bike, it's like, you know, it's a gravel bike, it's more than enough. It's like, they keep making more of these Mystique Holdsworth, more updated models, but all they're really doing is changing the paint every time. Um, and yeah, it's carbon fiber, it doesn't like... It either fails spectacularly, or it's rock solid, so there is no like, erosion or anything, it doesn't rust. It's carbon fiber, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna look at it, hopefully it's a good... But I like the paint scheme, it's fucking, um... It's prolapse colors, which I really like. It's black and orange. Um, and yeah, the group has a 105 group set. Oh, sorry, a, a, a SRAM rival group set, which is equivalent to a Shimano 105. Um, and yeah, yeah, the, the, the pannier mounting points are important to me. What else was there that was important? Yeah, the, oh yeah, the, the, the size, it's extra large, so it's big enough. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff. It was like, it's it's... It's the correct bike for me. It just took a lot of looking to find it. <laughs> anyway, the thing installed. Let's try this. Uh, right, Visual Studio Community 22 launch. Okay, so now if I tell... Oh, I have to sign in? Oh, for fuck's sake. Why? No, I don't want to sign in. Fuck off. I want dark. I want general go. The fuck is this music? All right, okay. Visual Studio 22 is open. 
Open project or solution. Uh, I will find where the Godot project is. We will open the solution. The solution is opening. I don't care what's new in fucking Visual Studio, get out of here. Right. It is opening. I am going to make it so that it will now be captured. Uh, Visual Studio. It is now being captured. I will now zoom in sufficiently. Uh, why is the Solution Explorer up here? I want it down here. Yeah, bottom, please. But not fucking half the screen, though. Thank you. Uh, where's the output box? Oh, the layout's fucked. Right, sprite. I don't think this is working. Position. Oh. <laughs> God fucking damn it! <laughs> like, I, I installed Visual Studio 22. What more do you want? What more do you want from me? Ah! <laughs> Fuck's sake. Ah! Please. No, I don't want to fucking sign in. Oh my god. No, what? Do I, do I really need to keep... Okay. Jesus. I've seen someone on the internet use Visual Studio 22 with Godot 4. I saw them do it. Where was that fucking video I saw? I'm gonna find it. It'll be in my history somewhere. I'm gonna scroll down. I watched it in the bath one day because I wanted to chill out and I was like thinking about this idea and stuff. Oh my god, that must be so long ago though. Unity Dev tries to do four reasons. Here we go. <sighs> Why well, it just works for him? It looks like. Oh, it did do something. Okay, it's just hidden in the file system view. Okay, so it's here. Okay, they hide some of the the files. Also, I'm noticing it looks like they added a git ignore. That's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adds a git ignore. That's nice. Navigation will be a lot easier for me. So, for instance, here, if I wanted to see my script, and uh, by the way, I recently installed Visual Studio 2022, so I'm probably gonna. This one just works instantly. That. Uh, a little more. Prior to that, I was running, um... His one just works instantly! I don't understand! He just opens it and it's there! <laughs> Why? 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 <laughs> Okay, I clicked restore nougat packages. Nothing happened. Also, I don't... Yeah, this is what I didn't want to have happen. I want this there. Perfect. <sighs> Why? <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. Right, editor. Editor settings. .NET editor. Visual Studio. Please work. Okay, it's opening in 22 by default, so that's good. Try build it once. Oh yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Save. <gasps> oh! Wait, it's working! Sprite is blue! Oh my god, Sprite 2D is blue. 
Chat, Sprite 2D is blue. Oh my god. I can mouse over it. Hey! There we go. Alright. Position. Thank you. Capital P position. P position. We're getting somewhere. Dot. Uh, transform. Uh, X. Uh, equals. D delta. Sure, yeah, that'll do. Uh... Cannot modify. Okay, P pl plus equals e uh, position. Is position just a, tr a vector two? Position equals new vector two x plus. Uh, uh, sorry, p p position dot. Oh god, position dot x plus equals one position dot y. Save. Did I misspell this? What? Cannot modify- Oh, sorry, what am I doing? <laughs> right, yeah, sorry. Okay, there we go. Yeah, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad. I, I do know how to program C-sharp, I promise. <laughs> right, okay. It's reloads. Okay, right, okay, right. Run the video game. Oh my god. Building.net project. It opens. It moves. Yay! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Okay. Now. <laughs> project. Export. Export project. Yes. Save. Yes, overwrite. Go. Yay! Oh my god. Okay, right. Uh, how do I do the ADP thing? I need the Android SDK tools, the command line tools, right? There's a latest and a latest two. <laughs> Fantastic. Which one's later? <laughs> the latest two is later. Uh, how do I ADP this? Do I just in here? Do I just open a command shell window? I know you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, c command. So how do I... How do I do this? Uh... Someone posted something earlier, right? <laughs> Type ADB. Okay. Oh, thank you, smart ass. ADB is not recognized. No, okay, that doesn't work. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna... You know what? I'm just gonna drag the fucking APK onto my phone and install it. I really don't give a shit. Need to install ADP. Okay, maybe. But, like, I installed the APK. Oh, sorry, not the AP... Oh, my God. The SDK... <sighs> NDK comes with ADP. You just need to CT to it. Right. Like, I have the Android SDK. Where, where, where in the Android SDK command line tools is this? <laughs> NDK here? Build tools core. No, I mean, I don't know, whatever. You just installed it so you could use it from anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I, I would prefer to have stuff be portable, but whatever, I guess. Right. See Android SDK platform tools. Is it platform tools? Aha! Thank you. Right, okay, we got there. C c command. ADP. Not add. There we go. Yeah, it does stuff. Okay, right. So we want to... What's the thing we need to do? Uh, it's ADP 
install, and then path file. Right, okay, 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 we got there, we got there, okay. So, ADP, install, with two L's? Is that how you spell install? I'm losing my mind. <laughs> yes, okay, slash path, we need to find the path. Okay, it's, uh... There, slash... That. Go. I'll oh, fuck it. <laughs> I keep saying ADP, don't I? No, devices slash emulators found. But my phone is plugged in! Do I need to... Do I need to use my phone for debugging or whatever? Uh, settings... Uh... Where is my developer settings gone? Uh, special features. Nope. Additional settings. Developer options. Here we go. Um... USB debugging. Okay. Allow. Okay. Disable ADB authorization timeout. No, 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 that's fine. We was fine. Okay, right. Uh, do that again. Failed to stat godot.apk no such file as directory. Do I need to... Is it quotation marks we need here? Because there's a space in the name that always likes to fuck things, doesn't it? There we go, okay. <sighs> yeah, 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 let's escape the spaces. Yeah, we got there. We got there, oh my god, that worked, okay. Uh, right, I'm opening the video game. No, it didn't work! Shit! It had an error that popped up. Unable to find... Ah, uh, I need to screenshot that right really quickly. Ah, oh, fuck it. Ah, uh, I'm not fast enough. Ah! I'm taking so many fucking screenshots. Oh, I got it! Okay. Dot not, dot .NET assemblies not found. Unable to find the dot .NET assemblies directory. Make sure the data block risk of Doe Android ARM64 directory exists and contains the dot .NET assemblies. Uh-oh, that's not good. Uh... Huh. So yeah, now that I have C-sharp code, it's not exporting to my phone, but... I don't know if that's gonna focus ever. Well... Get dot netted, bro. Uh, okay, so adding C sharp into this fucked it. Damn. Mm. I'm pretty sure I saw something about exporting to Android. Yeah, the person who said to try a script first. Yeah, I'm glad someone said that. It was it in Godot 4.2 Dev 3. I'm pretty sure I saw someone mention... Initial support for C-sharp on Android has been merged. It's still a work in progress with caveats outlined in the PR, and we haven't had time to look into what it takes to provide official Android export templates for the .NET build. So this time you'll have to try compiling templates from source and provide feedback on what works and what doesn't. But I did download a template file. Was it before I saw this? Initial support for C-Sharp and Android merged for Dev3 is now ready for mass testing. Official export templates are provided in the .NET mono build, so you can start exporting your C-Sharp products to Android and give feedback on what works and what doesn't. 
Keep in mind that this feature requires using .NET 7.0 as the target framework, which you could set in the servers file with... Right, okay, hold on. Most notably that it's not... It's still a work in progress with caveats outlined in the PR. Notably, we already know that it's not working on the ARM32 architecture. But this was ARM64 that I tried to build this on. Okay, so in the CS Pro file, we need to specifically build .NET 7. Why does the open with another app thing take forever to open? Okay, there we go. Just open this in Notepad. No, don't always open this in... Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I hate it when I accidentally tick that box. Okay, there we go. Right. Uh... Yeah, net.6 is being used in this file, so I need to set that 6 to a 7. Okay. Uh, let's close Visual Studio. And set that 6 to a 7. Um... So, initial support for C Sharp, uh, blah, 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 blah. Keep in mind that this feature requires using .NET 7 as the target framework. We can set in the CS profile with target framework, .NET 7 target framework. Yep, I've done that. Okay. Let's try this again. So, that file has been changed. Good. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, I'm now going to try building it again. Failed to build project. Oh, I got an error. What? Oh, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, it didn't actually work. Right, okay. There was an error this whole time. I'm an idiot. Okay, well, it opens on my PC. Okay. And now we will... Project. Export. Export project. Go, yes. Yes. Things are happening. So, .NET... So... It's dot seven seven point oh now. Did that did anything happen? Uh oh 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 there it goes. <laughs> it's exporting Okay. And no errors this time. Okay, right. Now we find this thing and we do this again. Excellent. That took slightly longer this time. Okay, now we try opening the game again. I no longer get an error. Hooray! There's a sliding high chat. Hooray! Okay, there we go. Good stuff. Excellent. All right. We in there, chat. Good. Whew, should be by chat now yeah, as it slides away. Yes, it should be. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. I'm glad I read that earlier, because otherwise I would have been like, why? Right? I'm so glad I read that. This took that took way less time than I expected. Exactly! There's other people coming in. The gamers come in and like, oh, is the game done yet? And my, my, while the programmers of us here are like, Oh my god, this was so good! <laughs> this was so fast! <laughs> okay, alright. I think that's everything. Is there- chat, is there anything else I need to set up? We've got- we've got Visual Studio code- we've got like, yeah, we've got, we got C-sharp code working. In Visual Studio and in uh, the other thing. Uh, for the Android deployment. .NET just works. Um, shame OBS doesn't fuck 
fucking work. Oh my god. There we go. Um, yeah, like this is... Get a stress ball of plushies you can punch for every annoying thing that doesn't work, yeah. Is it worth making that ADB command into a batch file so you don't lose it between sessions? Yeah, how would I do that? Like, CD to the place and then, yeah? <laughs> we could make that a bat file, I suppose, yeah. Godot has built in one-click deploy if you want to look into that. I don't know how it compares to what you're using. One-click deploy? Oh, does it? Uh... Movie maker mode. Maybe via VS? Look at the docs. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look. Um, if I can get my mouse in the right place. Okay. Uh, ah! Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I read the fucking Dev4 change log at some points, because I wouldn't have seen that. Why is it not just set to .NET 7 by default then? Like, fucking hell. What's, what, why would you not use .NET 7 over .NET 6? Um, uh, what One click export or whatever. What did you say? You said uh, one click deploy. Here we go. Oh, you, you found it as, <laughs> as soon as I found it. Uh, 4.2 one click deploy. What is one click deploy? One click deploy is a feature that's available on once platform is probably good to get a support device connected to the computer. Since things are going wrong on any levels of it's easy to do. Android. Exports the project with debugging enabled and runs it on the connected device. Make sure the... Yep. Um... Make sure to follow the steps described in the exporting for Android, otherwise the one-click deploy button won't appear. Oh, okay, do I need to configure one-click deploy? Hmm. Oh, it's... Hang on. It's this? Android. Oh! Oh, there's a fucking button to do all of this! Oh my word. Okay, my phone is unlocked and open and plugged in. There it is, I found the button. Right, does this work? It's doing something. Installing the device. Oh! Oh my god, it works! Wow, look at that! I don't have to, oh my god, that's so much simpler. Thank you, Geordie. That saves so much time. Oh, sick! Okay, alright, okay. Oh my god, the workflow is so good. What the fuck? Dude, that's so good. Just a one-click deploy to my phone. Sick! Oh my god, who needs a fucking emulator? <laughs> fuck, fuck emulators. <laughs> I got real hardware. Sick! Oh my god, that works really well. Alright, thank you. Cool! Okay, oh my god, that's so good. Ugh. Oh. Alright, okay. Anything else like that we should do before I actually start working on the game? <laughs> I'm just setting up my fucking working environment, right? I don't remember it being this easy back in the Godot free days. Yeah. Josh, can you show me how that works real quick? You have to... So once I've set up all the things, I've got USB debugging enabled on my phone, I unlocked my phone, I went through the whole process of exporting, blah 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 blah. In Godot, at the very top right, I know my mouse and stuff's tiny, but at the very top right, where there's a there's a remote debug button here next to the play button. And you click it, and I can remote debug the uh, OnePlus uh, thingy. Oh my god, there's my ID and my chipset, and my build. I hope none of that is, uh, confidential information. <laughs> I've always just leaked my phone details. <laughs> I, I hope that's okay. Um, but yeah, it just, it just runs. And then it just, it just builds it and pushes it to my phone. And then, like, it, it takes a fucking minute. Like, you know, the, like, and, and testing the PC version for small stuff would be better, but, um... 
But eventually it gets there and it, it comes up on my phone. Eventually. Installing the device. Yeah, there it goes. Look. Hi, chat. There it goes. Sliding to the right. My stupid game engine thing opens every time. But yeah, there it goes. Look. Cool. Okay. Um, that's really helpful. Do you have a certain app on the phone to load this? Android. <laughs> like G Google. I don't know. There's no app. It's just... I mean, I, I have developer settings enabled on my phone. It's that. It's not an app or anything. There's no Do app or anything. Okay. Um, well, I guess I need to now actually make a video game. Yeah, it, it builds... It just pops up from PC. Well, okay, it's... It, the app is the game, Alex Powell, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm I'm making the app. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> the app that's running on my phone is the app that I'm producing <laughs> with these tools. <laughs> that's what we just set up for the past three hours. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, like, the, the it, it makes the app. Let's first make an object that responds to walking up, down, left, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should, um... Yeah, how does input work? Alright, we're, we're gonna need to do some, uh... We're gonna need to do some, some documentation reading, aren't we? Um... So... Input! <laughs> uh... Input handling. Uh... Mouse and input coordinates, mouse cursor, controllers, gamepads, joypods. I don't see mobile here. Hopefully it's in mouse and stuff. Uh, wait, yeah, where is... Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't see... I don't see screen. <laughs> Let's just read the input event, shall we? Managing input is usually complex, no matter the OS or platform. To ease this a little, a special built-in type is provided. Input event. The state type can be provided, could configured to contain several types of input events. Input events travel through the engine can be received in multiple locations depending on the purpose. This is a quick example using closing your game if the escape key is hit. That seems like a useful thing to have. I'm going to add that like right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's take this. Oh, there's a copy button. So, public override void. Um, we get a we get a public override void of underscore unhandled input uh, called when an input event hasn't been consumed by node input or any GUI control item. It's called after node shortcut input and after node unhandled input. Unhandled key input. The input event pr propagates up through the node tree until the node consumes it. If it only if it's only called it's only called if unhandled input processing is enabled, which is not automatic. The method is overwritten and can be told to, to consume the input event and the those shoots. To consume the event and stop it from creating further up to those viewports, set input as handled can be called. For gameplay input, this method is usually better fit than a node.input as a GUI elements need higher priority for keyboard shortcuts because we're using shortcut input. Instead, as a called before, this method usually. Finally, to handle keyboard events, consider using unhandled key input for performance reasons. Yeah, okay, so this is like the last resort one you want to use. Got it. Um, if at event is input key, event key. If event key pressed and the event key is key code of key escape, we uh, get tree quit. Okay. So if, 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 the, if, the, if the key that triggered this event is being pressed and if the key that triggered this event is the escape key, the game closes. Sure. It's perfectly understandable. Run the game. Jeffrey. Game is open. Press escape. It doesn't work. <laughs> it didn't it didn't build. Why didn't it build? I got errors. Uh What? Failed to load project assembly. What? What? Why doesn't it work? Let 
Yeah, don't load the script. Close all. Okay. It, it doesn't... It doesn't... Oh, it works now. But, like, I get... Why, what are these errors about? Okay. Whatever, it works, I guess. That's only a half press. Don't you fucking get me started on that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't save in Visual Studio, did I? Because I'm an idiot. Yeah, and then I can... I can boop, and then it goes away. Yeah, okay. Excellent, good. So this is the most basic bitch version of input handling, whereas if like, yeah, okay, gotcha. However, it is cleaner and more flexible to use provided input map feature, which allows you to define input actions and assign them to different keys. This way you can define multiple keys with the same action. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So I can rebind keys and stuff. You can then more easily change this mapping on the process case without updating your code, even build a map key map feature on top of it, allow your game to change the key map. Yeah. You can set up your input map under projects, project settings, input map, and then use those actions like this. Input is action pressed UI right. Okay, so it works like Unity then in that respect. Okay. So you can do raw or you can do like the Unity style. Yeah, gotcha, 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 gotcha. How does it work? Oh, look at this diagram. Oh my god, I love it. Every input event is originated from the user slash player through the possible generating gener input event and feedback to the engine that was useful for gestures. The display server for each platform will read events from the operating system and then feed them to the root window. The viewers, the Windows viewport does quite a lot of stuff with the received input in order. So here's the person. They push a button. The operating system takes the button. And well, okay, there's a lot more in between these two layers, but the operating system gets the button eventually. Does gives it to the display server. The display server gives it to the viewport. The viewport function of a window manager, then it focus window, input of NG, Y event, shortcut info. Yeah, okay, so yeah, this is the, yeah, okay. Physics picking event. Well, that's, why is that after unhandled input? But yeah, okay, so we want, we want input event first. I haven't seen that smiley since power point in school. <laughs> nice. Where's the system interrupts? Yeah, right. Uh, if the viewpoint is embedding windows, the viewport blah 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 Androids in this input handle ice in input handle handling. <laughs> is it just gonna be fucking it's gonna be just a mouse click, right? This is gonna simulate a fucking mouse, isn't it? For Android, you start with creating a visual gamepad and use touch mouse events. What really? Android input. Hmm. Well, um, <laughs> doesn't seem to be documentation for Android input. Hmm. Why are you specifying Android? Also, you misspelt. Oh, did I? Android. Android plugins. Android Studio. Creating Android plugins using the Android editor. Input. Git accelerometer. No, this method only works on Android and iOS. On other platforms, it always returns vector three zero. Git gravity. What? I. I can get the user's current gravity. Yeah, okay, I, I should be searching for touch events. Sorry, but like... What? 
Uh, am I reading this right? I can get returns the gravity in meters per second squared of the device's accelerometer sensor. Does the, is it is it to tell which way up the phone is? So you know which way gravity is? Is that what it is? I d okay. Get gyroscope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Set accelerometer. Set gravity. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like 0.7 or whatever the default. 0.8? I can't remember what gravity is in meters per squared or whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, right, sorry. What t Touch inputs, yeah, yeah. What, what, what did you guys link? Sorry, hang on, I'm moving my mouse slowly over. Touch events, okay. I could just click the link, but then it's going to open in the wrong version of Firefox. Okay, touch events. <sighs> right, if you're using a touch screen device, you can generate touch events. Input event screen touch is equivalent to a mouse click event, and input event screen drag works much the same as mouse motion. Okay. 0.8 is SA gravity? Is that... <laughs> is that... Is that what I'm thinking of? <laughs> oh no, that's really sad if that's what I'm thinking of. Uh... I don't know how sensors in phones work exactly. You can get so much fucking data. There are so the, the phone is more sensor than anything else. <laughs> right. Okay. So input event screen touch is what we want. Represent a screen touch event description. Stores information about multi touch press release events. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay. Double tap. Ooh, cancelled. Index. Position. Pressed. Okay. So, let's do... Else if at event is... Input event... Screen touch. Um, you can see what event is generated when touching the mouse by printing event as text. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, if of else, if event is input screen touch event key. Uh, sorry, event is it just event? What does this return? Event screen touch. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, if event screen touch dot pressed uh, 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 how do I, uh, how do I check position? And well, we'll do that later. Get tree quit. Okay, so now, this is obviously very basic, but this is like, we need to just make sure this works at all before I start doing, if I do anything more complicated and then it doesn't work, I'll think that the complicated thing I was doing isn't, like, I wrote it wrong, but if we just make sure that just touching the fucking screen does something. Okay, so it's open. I'm going to touch the screen. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't quit. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Let's do... Maybe quitting doesn't work on Android. Let's do... Position... Equals... Uh, ve vector 2.0. So we'll reset the position of the sprite. 
if uh, if that works. Yeah, I may just need to start printing shit to console, right? Like, this. <laughs> like I could I can just print out the fucking the 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 events details, right? As text or something. Someone said earlier, right? I could just do that. Yeah, learning debug logging. That was yeah, that might be a good idea. Right. Okay, I'm gonna press. It's not working at all. Hmm. Yeah, touching anywhere and the position of the thing isn't working. So this isn't working somehow. So... This isn't quite right. Huh. Is JDQ feedback form a thing? Oh fuck, I forgot about that. No, it isn't. I completely forgot. Hang on, let me write that in my to-do list to do tomorrow or something. Um, oh my god, my to-do list gets longer. Uh, JDQ feedback form tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I forgot. I will try to do that. It's because the input event key if doesn't have... What? It's... Be Sorry. Oh, yeah. The is the else not for the inner if? Oh. 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 Oh, my fucking God. You fucking... Right. Right. Oh, my God. Put shit in curly brackets, damn it. Okay, right. There we go. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is this one now. Yeah. Thank you, chat. Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> Fuck. I. Th oh no! Don't build it on. Ah shit! I built it on Windows. Okay. Well, uh, Android. Okay. Oh my God! It's been a while since I programmed properly, right? So. It's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna make a bunch of stupid mistakes like that, right? Oh, failed to load .NET S Oh, that's the other, right, yeah, that's the other error that I'm just ignoring. <laughs> We're just ignoring that error. Oh, it works! Yeah, there we go. Right, okay, yeah, when I, when I click... So, high hi chat is sliding off of the screen, and when I click, it jumps back. The position gets reset. Okay. Okay. Input is working. Fantastic. <laughs> the most basic bitch version possible. Um, whoop. Okay, right. So we can get this to work. Um, now how do I get positions? So let's try to make it so... Yeah, now instead of just sliding the thing across the screen, let's make it so if I touch something, it moves. Um, let's see. So... We don't want it to be from the event handler, because what's the frame rate of event handler? <laughs> um, so I would want... We would want a desired direction vector that we normalize. And then we have the movement speed and we times the movement speed by that vector and then that's the direction that the thing goes. Right? Is what I said correct? <laughs> uh, yeah, I copy-pasted this code, Wayne. I didn't... I didn't type that. Surprised you went the C-sharp route. GDScript is very similar to Python. Now, you see, one of these things I have used a lot in the past... One of these things I haven't. <laughs> so I picked the one that I have. <laughs> I don't know shit about Python and GD scripts. I'm very happy. I'm very comfortable in C sharp, thanks. I like C sharp. 
Um, yeah, so... Hmm... Ah, oh, shit, I'm starting to get hungry. What time is it? Like, two? Fuck. What do I want to eat? Do I have fruit? You might want to melt apply by Delta time. Oh, right, of course, because, um... Yeah, 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 it, it says right here, use fucking Delta time! Yeah, 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 because it's, uh, this is, this is FPS based, isn't it? It's not, um, the other thing. There's no fixed update or fixed process in, uh, Godot, is there? Yeah, I don't know why they all have underscores in the names. This is like, this, this makes me think of C sharp, a uh, C plus plus for some reason. Uh, let's see. So, input examples. Mm, give oh, me an hey, example. Thanks. Anonymous gifted. What's this music? A subscription. An anonymous user gifted a tier 1 sub to What's This Music. It's Rainwave. Rainwave Game Radio. I'll link it in chat. But I, I like, don't know what the music is. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm listening to. It just plays and it's pleasant and not copyright. And I'm happy enough with that. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Anonymous. Um... Oh, okay, so here is, uh, oops. So here's this, here's the print thing, so we can print an event. Mouse position at click with velocity, oh, okay. Events versus polling. Sometimes you want your game to respond to a certain input, pressing the jump button, for example. Other situations, you might want something to happen as long as the key is pressed, such as movement. In the first case, you can use the input function, which will be called whenever an input event occurs. In the second case, Godot provides us the input singleton. <coughs> oh, okay. So I can just have if input screen pressed left hand side, like divine a boundary, like more than uh, half the screen width or whatever. I'd need to get the screen width, I suppose. Um, yeah, because this is at zero, zero, isn't it? And then this, yeah. So zero, zero is not the center of the screen. Zero, zero is the top left. Oh, is there a way I can change that behavior? Maybe I don't want to. The top left is zero, zero. And all of this is all positive. Oh my god, down and to the right is positive. Oh no. Oh, that is like, is that completely mirrored to the way I would think? I would think up is positive and I guess right would be positive, yeah, because that's the way Mario runs. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, it's right in the X, but the Y is... Oh my god. Why? Haha. -ha. Lol. Yeah, so z z why why yeah, positive up. Uh, sorry, negative up is uh, a bit yikes. <laughs> Look at chat. Chat is full of half the people being like that's totally normal, Josh, and the other half is full of people going like what? <laughs> Actually, no, it, it's most people saying it. It's totally normal, actually. Okay, fine, whatever. Negative Y is up. That's gonna cause so many issues. But okay, I'll get through it. Um, let's see here. What do I want to do? Um, man, I'm like... I can't have my train of thought going for some reason. So we want... If click left box goes left. We need to make the box, like, not the entire fucking size of the screen to begin with. Let's, uh... Yeah, okay. That's, this looks atrocious, but whatever. Um, so we, we don't want this, like, moving behavior anymore. We can get rid of this and not just comment it out. We just get rid of it. 
Um. Oh, is it 3D where up, Y up is positive? Right, okay. Uh, let's see, so... We can leave this in. Just, I can close, this is useful for me closing the game if, like, it gets stupid in Windows. Um, there is a handled input method, Wayne, yes. I am about to beginning using it. <laughs> um, there's, there's a little, there's a whole diagram, Wayne, of the whole... Here you go. Here's the whole diagram. Unhandled input event is, like, one of the last ones. Before physics picking events. But yeah, there's a, there's a, there's all these handled inputs. <laughs> anyway. Mm, so we would want... Let's just uh, do this first. So... Input. Let's just take this. And we'll just put this... Whoop, here. So it'll just print everything. Let's see what happens. I wonder where this prints out to. And if it would work on my phone. Right, so it's working. Oh, mouse motion at position. Oh, okay, so whenever I move the mouse, I'm getting, like, data outlet. You can see it at the bottom. Let's move the game somewhere where I can actually fucking see it properly. Right, okay, so currently, the mouse motion, and with velocity, it knows the direction that my mouse is traveling in. That's interesting. So, the, is the velocity just, like, distance to its last thing, I guess? Mouse position leaked! Oh, no! Yeah, and I can type with it. <laughs> Hello, chat. <laughs> but, like, spelled badly. <laughs> yeah, it spits out a billion mouse things per second while it looks at it. Okay. Now what happens if I run this on my phone? Do we get to see the phone things? Because <clears throat> if we do, that would be real fucking helpful. Because I want to see what positions are what. Sorry, I'm doing that. I feel like I'm doing this really slowly. I'm sorry. But I, I'm just. Uh, I want to just take my time with this. Right. So, no, it isn't outputting. Yeah. It's not outputting anything. Right. Hmm. Any chance you can increase editor font size? Uh, maybe. There's a reason why I stopped doing 5M programming streams. Yeah, it just slows you down, right? I need the help point, right? ADP logcast slash grep Godot. Okay, I presume I am typing this into my command window. <laughs> grep is not a recognized as an internal or external command, operable program or batch file. Uh -uh. Grep is Linux? Right, okay. ADP log packet. Capital... Oh, sorry. Dash, capital S, Godot. Yep. That definitely said things. Yep. Yep. <laughs> what does this do? <laughs> no, nothing by the looks of it. It definitely said things. <laughs> I 
It says remote debug, so I guess it doesn't. I guess that it doesn't output with remote debug. Right? I, maybe it's better to just print this as text on the screen. <laughs> Can you print text on the screen? This is just using GD print for everything. Surely I can print text to the screen. It's got to be a UI thing, right? Surely. Let's, let's just look in the editor. Add child node. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, a rich text label. Perfect. Uh, and we'll put. Hello in all caps. Uh, yep, that's there, all right. It's absolutely fucking minute. Oh, I guess because the scale of this is set to 0 0.2, maybe? Maybe it doesn't need to be a child. Nope, it's still absolutely minute. <laughs> In fact, I don't see it at all. What? <laughs> oh, because it's over there. What? Oh my god. I'm... <sighs> I'm doing this again. Add child node. Text. Rich text label. Go. Hello in all caps. Except I had caps lock on already. You need to import a font? Oh, for fuck's sake. Really? Ugh. <laughs> oh, okay. That's useful. Pfft. Yeah, okay. Tab size. BB code enabled? No, 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 no. Go to themes override font sizes. Themes. Theme. Empty. New theme. Theme overrides. Fonts. Font sizes. Normal font size. A hundred. Okay. A thousand. He's fucking crazy! Okay, there we go. A hundred will probably be... That's probably readable. Okay. Hello, in all caps. Right. Uh, now, how do I get a reference to this in script? Can I just make a pub? Can I do it the Unity way? Let's see. Does this work the Unity way? So if I do uh, public rich text. Oops. G G Godot. Oh my god. Rich text label. Text. A namespace cannot directly contain members such as fields that- what? Oh. I'm putting this in the wrong place. Josh, please. <laughs> it's a na I was making a namespace. Right, yeah. Fine. I, I will get into C-sharp again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside the class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. Public rich take label text. Yeah. Okay, save. And then if I go into this... Script. No, it doesn't look like I can, uh... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I can't do this the Unity way of, uh... 
moving this, like just dragging a rich text box into a thingy for it. No. Okay. Go to the C-sharp basic docs, they show you how to do it. Oh, okay. Yep. 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 Okay, great. That uh, didn't explain anything. <laughs> uh, features. Git node. The method git node returns a node instance. Right, okay, git node my sprite. So I'll just do it from here. I can't do it like in editor, like Unity style. Okay, that's fine. Right. Text equals git. Oh. G git node. Uh, oh yeah, right. I need to in in ready text equals git node. Uh, what did I call it? You can with exports. You can Unity style with export. But ah, okay. Export. Except spelt correctly. Okay. And then I go on the sprite. And I don't see anything. Okay, let, let's just look at the read documentation. That's going to return something very different, isn't it? Export annotation. Oh, so... Like this? But that should be the same. Also see C sharp exports. You're gonna cast weapons can be exported. This means their value gets saved along with the resource such as the scene they're attached to. This will also be available for editing the property editor to export your template using export issue. In the example of the file we saved. Right, and after building the current project will be visible in the property editor. One of the fundamentals of the Yep. Yeah, node. Yeah, that's what I want. Essentially, extra. Oh, you can make pr subgroups. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, and you can limit ranges, colors. Okay, custom node classes would normally see global classes. Yeah, rich text label. Right? Is that not what I'm using? What? Oh, okay. I think maybe nodes might be a little different here. Huh. I did save this to my, yeah. So let's do export public int number yo equals one three three seven. Go back into the editor. So it's not here. It's not on the sprite. Where is it? He'll read chat any day now. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, it's C-sharp. Gotta build. 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 Everyone is saying build. That uh, uh, mouse. Build. I'm sorry. Like, ev my my development environment is here, right? And chat is way over here. 
<laughs> right, build, built, sprite, not there, test, not there, this didn't work. <laughs> Building didn't work, in Visual Studio build, oh, build solution, build, done, okay, in the sprite, not there, in the script itself, not there, none of <sighs> so, so far, building in both ways hasn't worked. So, thanks for the screaming at me, chat. For fuck's sake. Going back to reading. So, uh, the docs did say, and after building the current project, it will be visible in the property editor. So I don't know. It builds the .NET project. I think building in Visual Studio is important. I don't know. It should have shown up above the texture property in Sprite 2D, but I've never used... So it should be above here. Something is going wrong related to these errors. It, is it because... Is it because I'm using... It, or these errors start to show up ever since I switched to .NET 7? Do I need to set something to .NET 7 in here? It doesn't look it. Like... To get the Android export, I needed .NET 7. And that works. But... But ever since then, everything is breaking in the editor. Just restart. Not the entire game. The entire project. Ooh, baby, that's kind of cursed. Aha! That did work. There you go. Restarting the editor worked. Okay. Good job. We got there. Right, we got text and number yo at the top. Alright, sick. Uh, why is this... What? Am I dumb? Has this reverted to an old version of the code? What? What the fuck? So now I have... Now I have it in the editor, but in the code it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> what?! Okay, I guess I'll restart Visual Studio as well. <laughs> what?! <laughs> Ah! Oh my god, the code has reverted. What the fuck? 
I know you can't see it again because OBS hates me and won't recapture the thing even though it has exactly the same process title, but... Right. Oh my god. If that ever happens... Can you imagine if that ever happened? Like... I, I had been programming for hours and then that happened. I would fucking absolutely flip out. Is it in like the history or something? I guess not because I haven't I haven't committed anything, right? Can you just undo as long as you have the editor open? Oh well, I've restarted the editor now, so there's no hope of that. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I haven't. I mean, it hasn't. But like, but now why is it it? On the sprite, it's there. So, Godot has an old version of the script open, obviously. <laughs> the built version, yeah. I'll just build it again, whatever. And then it'll disappear. Yeah, okay. Alright, whatever. We haven't missed that much, right? It's just that this and my touch to make the box stop moving um so i lost uh i lost my touch event or whatever that's fine export with the, P the x um uh rich text label uh te test text okay right build Away! Okay, built. Oh my god, there it is. And I can drag this into here, presumably. Hooray! Okay, it works Unity style. Alright, sick. Um, right, if... I'll just find that code again that I copy-pasted, right? Um, if... Uh, this one actually not if it's just this isn't it it's just any fucking event you have a backup on your stream vod that is true right so then we do test text dot text equals event as text hooray okay Oh, well, plus equals, I guess. Plus equals. <laughs> plus equals, uh... Slash new plus. Okay, right. Okay, build! Okay. Let's go, though. Alright, okay. I'm gonna press play. Here we go, we're playing. It's going. And doesn't work. What? <laughs> Why? The the thing's gone. The thing at the Right, okay. Drag that back over there. Press play. Okay, I'm not building with Visual Studio anymore because it seems to break it. Okay, there we go. Right. Hi. Okay, right. We'll make it equals because, yeah, it just immediately gets, like, fucking overflowed. Okay, build. Run. Okay, alright. We, we have something. Right, mouse motion at. And then all this stuff. Okay, right. Escape. Okay. Go, androids. <laughs> oh my god, it's two. I only have like an hour and a half left. Or an hour and a quarter, I guess. Ah, Jesus. All because I can't get debugging from phone working, which might be a big problem later. Okay, we're going. 
Hacker voice I'm in. Screen touched at, screen dragged with, screen released at. Right, that's what we get. Ooh, and I can, uh... I can use two fingers. I can use three. I can use four. How many does my phone support? Five? Six? Seven? Eight? Is it arbitrary? Is it, can, can it be anything? Oh my god. Nine touch points. Wow, okay, that's actually pretty impressive. Um, okay, right. So screen dragged with zero touch points at position, blah blah blah, with velocity, blah blah blah. Right. Screen drag is probably what we want, and screen touch. I'm assuming it's going to log to log cat, so you need to capture that if you can't in Godot. Yeah, I don't know what log cat is, so I don't know. Let's search log cat in the documentation. If I can click the fucking thing. Right. Log cat. Searching. Validation layers. Creating Android plugins. Compiling for Android. Hmm. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem like there's a way to uh, see that in Godot. So I'd have to look at Logcat myself. That's okay. That might be a possible thing to do. Right, okay, but now I understand what's happening. Right, okay, so screen drag. It's not taking gyro by looks of it. Or gravity. I wonder what my gravity is. Actually, wait, I want to know what my gravity is. <laughs> How do I... How did I find it before? Oh my god. And... And... Droid input. How did I find this before? I was searching Android and then everyone was screaming at me to look at input at uh, mobile or whatever. Ow. Accelerometer. I can't spell. That's the problem. I'll just search for gyro. Git gravity. Returns the gravity. Okay, I want to know what the gravity is. Come on, Josh, we need to ship this game by the end of the day. Yeah, I'm just exploring. I'm just, it's just an exploratory phase of messing around with Godot and learning stuff. Git underscore gra- Ah, oh, what? There's no git gravity for me. Input dot git gravity. Git gravity, Wee. Okay. Vector free input. Uh, to string. Good old to string. Nice. Alright, let's do this. <laughs> Build it. <laughs> Run it. So, I wonder what my PC's gravity is. Ah, oh, okay, right. Build it on Android. I want to know what my gravity is. <laughs> I'm just messing around with things, Valkyrie, and just learning stuff, figuring out Godot. Occasionally make a workflow breakthrough thing, right? But we're just chilling. Oh, here we go. Gravity. My gravity is... Oh, yeah. So I think it's... I think it points down. It's changing so rapidly. But it'll be XYZ, right? So 
My phone doesn't think it's flat. But I have a, a gravity... Oh, it's... Oh, is it a normalized vector? I think it's a normalized vector that points down. Yeah, that's what gravity is. Yeah, putting it flat on my desk gives me a 9.8. Is that is that how you use a, make a level <laughs> with your phone? <laughs> so if I have it fully upside down, yeah, now it's now it's 9.8 instead of negative 9.8. Yeah, okay, I see. Okay, so it's just uh, so gravity is just down vector. Okay, boo, you're <laughs> whatever. Okay, um... 9.8 is the G? I... don't... think... So. maybe? Oh yeah, because it was normalized. Right, yeah, if it was normalized, why is it going to 10? That doesn't make any sense, it'd be 1. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 you're right. 9.8 is the G's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 9.8 MS per... Oh, so it is actually my gravity. Oh, it's not just a normalized vector to down. It's the gravity I'm experiencing. That's such an easy app. Oh my god, quick. I'm looking on the Play Store. Test your gravity app. Test your gravity app. If only I could spell gravity. Oh my god, that's such a fucking... Gravity sensor it exists. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be one G, right? Like, <laughs> someone has made this app. It has 10k plus downloads and embedded adverts. <laughs> See, there you go. That'd be a fun app. Test your gravity. Okay. Anyway. And then, and then it can go viral, and then someone on the space station can download it and use it, and they can be like, look, it works! And then, ah, oh, just pff, perfect. <laughs> uh. I'm a marketing genius. What was I doing before I got distracted by gravity? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh. Um... Well, I'll collect data from your app, yeah. Um, right, okay. The position of the... Okay, let's just make the position of the square the position of the touch. That's what I want to do. Okay, so on input. Um, we, we need a... Test label. Oh, hey, look, that's what... <laughs> um, we need a... Vector 2, that is uh, touch position, and then we want a movement, uh, a float of, uh, uh, exported float of, uh, float of movement speed, um, and then on process, we, uh, pos position equals, right, okay, that's the last thing we do. We get a, no, 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 a, p a pos position, oh my fucking god. We make a vector 2 <laughs> called new pos. We go new pos equals, uh, now how do I lerp with movement speed to a position? Oh god. Oh no. New pause equals position. I need to find the difference between the two normalized and then move in that direction by the movement speed. So So we need a direction. So we need a vector two of direction and direction equals new pause take away position uh
Wait, what am I doing? New pol- what is new pos? No, that's- new pos is the fucking- Yeah, touch position. That's even what it tried to do, right? Position... No, wait, yeah, new pos... Equals... Position. Okay, there we go. Minus... Touch... Touch position. Okay, there we go. Fuck me, man. Um, oh boy, I'm writing code, and now there's lots- Oh boy, oh, I read chat. Wouldn't a method for this be better? Like, oh, here we go! <laughs> uh, and then at the end, we want... Pos position equal new position. How does it know? Um, direction, and then, uh, movement. So then we want... New pause equals direction times movement speed. Oh my god, it knew. It knew what I wanted. Okay. Creepy. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. That maybe that works. And then touch position. All right, let's just get mouse first. Uh so input. So uh touch touch position equals input dot uh Wait, what am I doing here? <laughs> I need an event handler. I need... I need... Uh, if... At... Event... Does not equal null? No, no, no. If at event is... Uh, mouse... Pause... Git global mouse position. I mean, I could just do it that way, I suppose. Every frame. Mm, no, I want click, don't I? M mouse button? If event is mouse button event input mouse event event mouse. There we go, Josh. Uh, mouse button yeah. Event mouse button. Ah! Wrong bracket. Um, if event is, uh, if it's, uh, if event mouse button dot pressed, uh, if true the mouse button state is pressed, yes. And... I don't know, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if it's pressed. Um, and the event mouse button is left mouse. But button index. What's button index? Button index gets the mouse button identifier. One of the mouse button. And event mouse button is equal to mouse button dot left. Close bracket. Oh my god, I hate being this zoomed in. Um, yeah, event is mouse button, event, input event mouse button, event mouse button, blah blah blah, event press. If it's uh, then uh, the, the position. So then uh, touch position equals event mouse position dot position. There we go, it knew what I wanted even. Perfect, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't do that one thing. Right. Lovely. Let's try that. Does this work? I did save, right? Doesn't work. Movement speed is set to nothing. <laughs> Movement speed equals five. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> oh. Uh, the box is gone. Hmm. I'm doing something wrong. Zoom out a touch? Okay. Touch position is set to nothing. Oh, this should only happen if... What am I doing? This just wasn't timed by Delta. Wait, so this should only happen if... 
if the button is even pushed. Oh, hey, thanks. Right? Typhon underscore S just resubscribed for six months. Should Hi, I, Josh. Should I just be doing this in the touch position? For now, let's just do that. Obviously, this is, like, physics-based. Uh, sorry, frame rate dependent, whatever. I know what I'm saying. So now if I left click, it just vanishes. <laughs> Why does it vanish? <sighs> Test. Text. <laughs> equals. Position. To string. <laughs> what? Oh, right. It just sets it instantly to... Oh. 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 Oh, we're getting bigger. Is it, to, is it reversed? Am I supposed to be doing this the other way? The numbers just get- they get the, the numbers! What do they mean? Um, hmm. I forget how to even do basic shit like this. Oh, I needed to normalize it! Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Right. Uh, equals... Wait, how do I do this again? This is really painful. What am I... Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It's still not really... Right, now it's based at zero. Huh. It's like, it's, it, now it moves what I, it's doing sort of what I'm wanting, but it's not remembering its previous position. Touch position equals event mouse position. Vector to pol, new pos equals position. So that should be the new position. I mean, I don't actually need this new pos, right? Like... Uh, yeah, I d this new pos is like totally irrelevant. This is pointless. It doesn't. F I'm just not actually doing anything with it. We can't see the code when you're running the game. Why? What? Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Um. It only runs once when the event happens. Yeah, but like it's resetting to zero. Like, I'm clicking multiple times in the same place, and it's not moving closer. It's like, it's like tethered to zero. Plus equals position? No, it should. Oh! Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and obviously it's only when I click, it should be like... When I hold, obviously. But it's doing the desired behavior. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so out of this. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just setting the position to the fucking to movement speed. The, I'm setting the position to the amount I wanted it to move in one go. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I I'll get back into it. Once I do this for a few days, I'll stop being fucking completely brain dead, but... This is where I'm, like, completely brain dead right now. Um, yeah, so the event only happens if if button is held. Is there a hold? Down, I would say. Not double click. I would say if it was down. But obviously this is not really the right way to do this. 
do, 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 is released, is pressed. Maybe I should just use the actual input thing instead of doing what I'm doing. Because this is just one event, but that's not really what I want, right? What? Is there no... Wait, okay, I, I know what I want to do, and it's not this, but is there... Is there not a held? I have a pressed, I have a released. Is there not a held? There's a double click. Global position, meta pressed, native instance, position pressed, shift pressed, window ID, what? Wait, where's release even? I'm so confused. Is action released, is released. Huh. Hold and release are the same event. What? Hold. Release. Press and release. I'm dumb. Oh, right. I see. Yeah, okay. It, it's false if it's released. Yes. So I would have to... So, yeah, okay. Right, okay. Anyway, this isn't the correct way to be doing this. I need to be using the proper input thingy, right? Um, so I need to be using the... The fuck? I need to be using the thing... Uh... The thing I was supposed to be using, right, the... Oh my god, where the fuck am I in the docks right now? This is not where I want it to be. Nice caps lock. Okay. Yeah, so I need to set the thing that I, like... Yeah, input map. And then... Why am I... I've fucking... I've done this 10 billion times before of... I have characters that move in video games. Why am I struggling so hard to think of how to implement this? So I would have every frame... Okay, here's what I'm thinking, chat. Every frame we do... If, key down, do thing. If not, don't, right? Well, I wouldn't write an if not, obviously, but... And then in the input, we would say, tell underscore process if key down. Is what we do here? Or would we just every frame just check what the keys are, right? So I'm, I, I just need to do, instead of using an event, which is not what I want. I need to just every frame check if the key is pressed. Right? So I just want if key down do thing, if not, I don't need the input thing at all. If mouse input Event mouse. How is... If input, that's what I need, is mouse button. Yeah, okay. Is fee physical key pressed? Is key pressed? Is label key pressed? Yeah, okay, here we go. Is mouse button down? 
Is mouse button pressed? Mouse button. Left. Is left mouse button pressed? Oops, I forgot a bracket. If key down do thing. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Why am I doing it this way? Uh, we need this. So touch position equals input mouse position. Input dot get mouse button mask. It seems like I can't get the mouse position. Mouse mode. I know you can't see what I'm looking at. Mouse mode. Mouse mode enum. Get last mouse velocity. Get mouse button mask. Is mouse button press. Set custom mouse cursor. Warp mouse. I can't. There's no like. Get global. Get local mouse position. There we go. That's all I need. Why am I doing this in such a convoluted fucking way? And we can get rid of all this. And now this works and does exactly the same thing. Oh, a tire direction movement speed times delta. Don't forget that part. What? Why does that not work? Oh. Float. Fuck you. <laughs> right. Boop. Run. Jesus, man. Okay, it moves horrendously slowly now, obviously, because of the delta, but the movement speed needs to be much higher. Movement speed needs to be, like, 50. <laughs> Zoom! Okay, right, there we go. Okay, Jesus, man. Why was this so fucking difficult? Right, okay. Now, I need to get, yeah, it's five, it's not five pixels per, oh yeah, it's five, pi yeah, per, yeah, you're right, five pixels per second, yeah. Uh, now, how do I make it only move in the left and right axis? Um, position e plus equals, uh, right, so direction I'd want to either be full left or full right. So if the direction X is positive, beyond, if it's beyond the center of the screen, right, where's the center of the screen? <laughs> it's not as simple as direction Y equals zero because then the, the player will move less or more based on how far away the mouse is up and down from it. It's not that simple. Like, as if I have the mouse... Look, if I have the mouse here, it does not move sideways very far. But if I have it here, it moves sideways a lot. So I can't just direction Y. I need to find the center of the screen. And based on where you clicked, if it's left at the center, it goes left. If it's right at the center, it goes right. That's what we need. We don't need all this direction stuff. Um, remember, this is going to be more complicated on mobile because you're going to have multiple touch inputs at once. Yeah, I think I would probably... I'll just hand them all as one click, right? Um, yeah, so we want... We don't want any of this direction stuff. So what we actually want is the center of the screen. So it's... A, right now it's 1080 tool. So if I open a calculator... <laughs> 1080 divided by 2 is funnily enough 540. I don't know why I needed a calculator for that. So, if... Touch position dot x is greater than is smaller than 540 uh, then position plus equals new vector 2 we want to go left so we would say 1 0 times all this shit okay else this obviously means if they click in the middle, then uh, bad things will happen, but that's okay. <laughs> if they click in the middle, they'll all, it will prefer one position over the other. We want negative one. Oh, is it? Is it? 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, negative. Yeah, I've got that flipped, haven't I? Yes, you're right. I've got that flipped. Right, we don't need all this stuff. Okay, lovely. Ah, save. Right, okay. So now, if I run the game, and I click on the left, it goes left. If I click on the right, it goes right. And in the middle... Wait, what? Why is it relative to the... Is that because of local? <sighs> oh. Right, it wants... Uh, I want um, global mouse position. So now if I click on the left, it goes left. If I move my mouse to the right, it goes right. Perfect. And then we have an invisible line in the middle. Okay. Now... Um, what if it's mobile? This won't work on mobile, right? If input touch, oh, geez, is touch. Oh dear. Okay, well, this is when we're going to start running into a bit more problems. I don't want touch events. I want... Okay, so I, I might have to use the input thing for this instead, so... So I might have to do the thing that I was talking about earlier, because I can't just do this in the process thing. I have, I'd have to use a touch event, and then track the touch event in the process thing. Okay, so... Try it on mobile first, mouse might be emulated. True! Yeah, let's give it a, let's give it a try, shall we? That is very true. Um, let's try it. In before game crashes on my phone. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, it is. It is emulated. Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah, you're right. Oh my god, thank fuck for that. So, yeah, so if I click on the right... Yeah, and it, and it handles... If I multi-touch, it's the center of where I touched. Yeah, okay. So, if I want multi-touch, I'm gonna have to get more complicated than this. Um... But do I, do I even need multi-touch? I mean, if I want a boost button that they press with their left hand, I might. Hmm. But yeah, we can go left or right. That's basic movement done. Um. Well, done. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> It works. Um, yeah, so if I want multi-touch... Let's just quickly... Do the docs say multi-touch? Yeah, okay. Touch screen button. Oh no, that's a that's not what I want. That's a that's a UI element. Yeah, okay. Uh there's only buttons.
Right, okay. So if I generate a multi-touch... Okay, so I might have to use the input visualizer, uh, input function anyway. Because if I, if I make an input event screen touch, um, if I do this, I can then iterate through all of the touches that were generated and check if any of them are on the left or on the right. Um... And then if if you multi-touch, ah, how do we want to do this? So if you multiple touch, say you're playing with two fingers for any reason, or you're fat fingering the game, and you touch two different places, I would want the average of those two places for the for where you're going, for where you want to move the cube. However, if you push a UI element, I don't want any of those things to go through. But isn't this already a thing with the inputs? Isn't it already the inputs don't go through if it goes to the UI? That's already a thing, right? We, we, we went through this. No. Input event is before GUI. So... So let's say, let's say I have a boost button. And the boost button is in the middle of the screen. Or on the... Let's say the boost button is on the left of the screen. Right? So you're playing with one finger. And you want to go right. But you also want to boost. So you press the boost button on the left. You're now multi-touching the phone. If it averaged the two positions of the touch, you'd be clicking the middle, and you might go right or left. Clearly what I need to do is ignore the boost button. I could do unhandled input, that is true. Yes, that is true, I could take from after the GUI. But yeah, if you press the boost button, I want to ignore that input for the sake of your... for the sake of moving left and right. Um, so you'd have to ignore specifically the button input, but if you did have just two fingers on the screen that were both touching the screen and not touching a button, I can't just arbitrarily pick one to ignore. I would have to average both of them. Yeah, okay. But yeah, if it's GUI event... Okay, this is interesting. So, a multi-touch. How is a multi-touch handled? So, say we make an input, we make a touch event. The touch event is a multiple touch. One of those touches is touching a GUI. Is that touch alone removed for the unhandled key input event? Or the unhandled input event? Or will both touches be discarded? Or will both go through? Yeah, that's... That's an interesting question. Ideally, it obviously just disregards the one touch that touched the GUI element. That's what I would want, but I bet that's not the default because there's probably a bunch of other situations where you'd want one and not the other. Hmm, yeah, I would have to test. I like how we're barely started with Godome and was into the intricacies of our touch inputs. Well, this is important. I'm just doing... I, I know I'm not making much of a game right now. But I, I, I just want all these problems. I just want to know there's a solution. And just like... Just figure all this nitty gritty stuff out. Like I could right now... Make a... Like go into paint. Make a cube. Make it fly around. Make the animations of it flying around really nice. Make it all smooth and lerpy. Get some other cubes spawning and falling down the screen. And if you hit them they disappear and a number goes up. And if they hit the bottom the game ends. I could do all of that stuff right now. Really easily, right? But then I add a boost button. <laughs> and then I'm fucked, right? So I'm interested in how that stuff works now. I'm trying to go through all the problems. Yeah. So. I would think. Hmm. 
Right, okay, Gogsy. So, I would think if the GUI thing doesn't work, I would iterate through all of the... Oh, but then I would need to know where the position of the GUI is. I was going to say, I would iterate through all the indexes. If any of them were over any GUIs, I'd disregard them for the calculation of where to move the cube. But, yeah. Also, I haven't thought about this. What's the art style going to be? I could make, um... Why not make create invisible buttons? That is an option. But the screen space handling is going to be annoying if I do that. But, um... Yeah, I could make it a three-dimensional game. Right now, I'm just sort of, like... I'm working in 2D. But there's no reason that... This couldn't be with three-dimensional art, right? Can I have a three-dimensional art asset in 2D mode? Maybe I can't. Maybe that's like trying to do too much fancy stuff. But I was thinking I could have the cube could be like a cube and not a square, right? A three-dimensional one that rotates or something. Hmm. That might look a bit nicer. I guess I could just create an animation in 2D for that. Hmm. Well, I'll worry about that sort of stuff later. Um, yeah, just make all my GUI, GUI in the code. At that point, I might as well just be fucking using, like, mono game or FNA, right? <laughs> if I start doing all that stuff. Um, let's see, I've got an hour left. Is there any other, like, fundamental problem-y thing I want to test in an hour? Tomorrow I'll definitely start getting on the actual game. Um, how do menus work? Like, I need to figure out how the GUI works at all. Because uh, right now the game obviously just starts in this test scene. I should probably make, like, a main menu scene. How does transitioning between scenes work? Are they even called scenes? I need to learn this out. Uh, learn this out? I need to figure this out. That's another f fundamental. Your first 2D game. Right, yeah, this seems like a good place to start. Hmm. Shiver. Setting up the project. Organizing the project. Make a player, a mob, and a HUD, which we combine into the game's main scene. Yeah, okay. So like um they're called nodes, I thought, but yes, that 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 makes sense. It's th this this like this like uh scene like hierarchy thing makes me makes a lot of sense in my head. That was I saw that about Godot and I really liked it. Like, yeah, scenes are like prefabs in Unity, but, like, I I much prefer this scene system where they're not prefabs or whatever. Like, everything is a scene or a prefab. Like, everything. Because that's how, that's how OBS works. Like, OBS has, like, these scenes that I can, like, click between or whatever. Um, but then I also sometimes have scenes in the scenes. So I can add, like, you know, this sort of, like, layered stuff to it. That's how, that's how this Godot thing works. And I like it a lot. I like this system. So yeah, we'd have like the main game scene. And within that scene, there's a player object, which is own scene with all of its player things in it. And then, yeah, I like this a lot. Any node is a scene in Godot. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Also, sorry, the bot spammed you. <laughs> but yeah, any, any scene is a node or any node is a scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I like that system. I like it. Anyway, sorry. Uh, creating the player scene. Yeah, okay. Coding the player, creating the main game scene. Heads up display. Okay, yeah. So this, this like, your first 2D game, this seems, like, pretty useful. C++? What the fuck? Since when can you use C++? What? <laughs> 
Josh the OG hating Unity before it was cool, yeah. Oh, the bot is still spamming about Josh done quick. <laughs> how, how long has the bot been spamming about Josh done quick? Oh, for fuck's sake. I need to fix that. <laughs> oh, dear. You can in Godot 4, can you? You can use, uh... Oh, for the love of fucking... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, yeah, you can use, uh, you can use, uh, thingy, can you? In, you can use C++, that's interesting. Huh. Why? <laughs> Why would you want to use C++? <laughs> because some people hate themselves, that's why C++. Right, okay. Fine, it's only the second time. Yes. Yes, this is why I hate exactly this, Arco. How do I fix it? I don't remember how to fix all of it. <sighs> Specifically the Twitch one. How do I make a new one of those? I hate screen capture so fucking much. I even fucking intentionally didn't have the settings file in the thing by default. Uh, I don't remember how to like... ...revoke the previous one. For fuck's sake. That one, Josh. Sorry, hang on. I need to fix a lot of things now. Because, of course... I think it's that's what I need to do. Yeah. And then I can make a new one. Okay. There's one. What's the rest of them? <laughs> oh yeah, that one's not a problem, I don't think. Good. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that one's a problem. Yeah, that one's a problem. 
Oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry, I'll get back to stuff in a minute. In fact, how much time is left? There's only an hour left. That would kind of suck if I stop now, but I don't know how else to fix this. Like, I kind of need to do this literally the second. <laughs> well, I guess I don't really use these anymore. I hope. Well, we'll soon find out. Okay, that one's not really that much of a problem. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, right. That wasn't as big a problem as I thought it was. Uh, I guess I need to do that first. Hold on. Sorry, I will resume game development in a moment. Boop. I, don't, I think this still works. God, I hope this still works. Oh, please don't tell me that's the same. No, it's not. Hooray! Lovely. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, and the bot crashed. It's funny, that. Okay. There it goes. Lovely. Excellent. Great. Okay. I wonder how many other people even noticed, Arco. I'm glad you noticed, at least. Um, right. Before I continue, close this fucking file. Um, sorry, hang on. Right, okay. Close that. Okay, lovely. Right, anyway, the bot needs to not spam the fucking Josh Dunn Quick thing anymore. Where is Josh Dunn Quick? Where is the command for it? There it is. Uh, yeah, we don't need this anymore. Boop. Boop. Save. Okay, lovely. GitHub desktop. Pointless commands. Push. Okay, there we go. Right. Right, where was I? Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, right. Okay, right. <laughs> Sorry. The UI. What was I doing? I don't even remember what I was doing now. The scenes. I was trying to figure out the scenes, wasn't I? Hey, okay. Um. Main game scene. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So how do I transition between scenes? Wait, what? Public override void new game. This new game. New game. Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Hmm. I guess it doesn't say how to transition between scenes. Can I just do like scene.load or something? Scene, but spelt correctly. Set scene, no. Hmm. 
The short answer is git tree change scene to file. Ah, okay. Git tree change scene to file. Changes the running scene to the other one at the given path after loading into the packed scene and creating a new instance. Returns error, blah, blah, blah. blah. What's a packed scene then? Changes the running scene to a new instance of the to packed scene, which must be valid. Oh, that's if I've like had this, like a, that's, yeah, instead of a file path, it's a, another one. Yeah, 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 okay. So let's do, oops, oh my god, what is happening? Ah, got my fucking, my desktop situation is so bad right now. Okay, uh, let's make a new scene. Create new node. I hope I'm making like a new scene, right? New scene, there we go. New scene. New 2D scene. We're gonna call this main menu. Alright, we're gonna save. This is main menu scene. Okay. And then we're gonna add a script to the main menu. We're gonna new new screen uh, main menu.cs. Sure, perfect. And then when this is ready. We need a we need a export of a packed scene a main game scene. Um, is there a way to send information between scenes that isn't just writing to disk? I wonder. That's maybe a thing for another day. And on ready, we'll get git tree. Uh, Set, set scene. Ah, oh, fuck. What was it? Uh, change scene. Change scene to packed. Then we'll do main game scene. And then. Good. And then we save. And then we build. And then we should get that thing in the editor. There it is. Main game scene. And we will. We will drag in scene.thingy. Perfect. Okay. So now if I play the game, nothing should be different. Fantastic. Okay. But it is starting on a different scene. We can do... Uh, we can do an on a key or whatever, but can I do a, a wait? Sleep? <laughs> wait? I guess this is all Fred stuff, right? I'll just make the game freeze for a second on it. We'll just do int i equals zero. And every frame will int or do i plus plus. No, i plus plus. And if i is greater than... Oh, it's in here, isn't it, you idiot? And, uh... Oh, hey, thanks. Zero's just resubscribed for 38 months. If 38 I months. is greater than okay. 100, 1,000, then we'll uh, do this. <laughs> okay, there we go. That'll work. <laughs> Thanks, Zero, for 38 months. Oh, wait, just started instantly. Oh, I haven't set this as the actual fucking opening scene, have I? Project settings. Uh... Main scene, yeah, it's the other one, isn't it? Main menu. So I don't actually know if this works, even. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh-oh. Maybe this doesn't even work. Uh, thanks, Zero, for 38 months. Hello. How's it going? I don't think this works. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. And I can't press escape to close it, even. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. A thousand. Okay, a thousand was a big number. <laughs> Okay, right, it does work. Okay, 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 yeah, okay. Right, the, the, there's no reason to have an arbitrary wait at the start, but I just wanted to see if transitioning between scenes works. Yeah, okay, 100 is not better. Okay. Uh, yeah, so just don't even bother doing that. Okay, right, this was such a fucking stupid, uh, such a stupid way of doing that. Yeah, process is uh, update, yes, that's right. Um, 
there is no uh, there is no fixed update in Godot from what I can see. Right, okay, let's open a different scene. So if I double click this, it just opens. Okay, beautiful. So we have different scenes, and then this is the main game. Okay. Um, what other fundamental things do I need to figure out how to do? <laughs> Um, it depends, Jelly. If you want to get a game, if you want to get a job in like a big game development studio, then they'll use C++. But if you want to do indie stuff, then a lot of people use C Sharp, right? But there's also physics process. Oh, there is a there is a one of these, is there? Pu pu public overrides void physics process. Oh, and it gives a delta still. Oh, that's nice. Okay, interesting. So there is a fixed one, okay. Um, right, okay. Setting up the project, create the player scene, coding the player, choosing animations, preparing for collisions. Yeah, so they're doing the input thing here. Yeah. I guess I don't want to use this input thing, right? Because I'm not using, like, keys. It's all mouse position, mouse presses thing. C-sharp feels outdated after all that Unity mess. There are so many other things that use C-sharp. Um, like XNA, FNA, Monogame, all the XNA derivatives. This. Um, fuck, what other indie game engines use C-sharp? There's probably loads, right? Lumberyard? Yeah. I think Unreal doesn't use C-sharp, right? X and A, what is it, 2010? Lots of people still use Monogame or F and A, or just actual X and A, you'd be surprised. Celeste was made in Monogame or F and A or one of those, right? I, I, can, I can tell an X and A game when I look at it. I like it. Um, but I mean, C sharp, uh, C plus, whoops, C sharp, C plus plus is definitely one of the harder languages. Um, so it may be better to learn C plus plus, because then if you can do C plus plus, you can do C sharp. <laughs> I would say. I, the first programming language that I ever learned was C plus plus. It was like proper trial by fire stuff, but I... I have completely abandoned C++ in favor of C-sharp. I like C-sharp so much more. Um, but, uh... Oh, look at it go. <laughs> but yeah, um... I wish C Sharp had an option for manual memory management. That's my only complaint. But that's the whole point, is that you don't do that. <laughs> to be honest, after C++, everything else feels far easier to learn, lol, from my own experience. Yeah, exactly, 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 exactly. I would say C++ is definitely worth learning. Like, again, like I said, if you learn C++ and you can do it, you can do anything. <laughs> Right. Everything else is like, unless you'd like C or assembly language, everything else is easier than C++. Use unsafe keywords. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing to now. I am kind of just like flapping around. Um, I think I've done everything I set out to do today. Like, I've got... Godot working, I've got the pipeline working, I've got some assets in, I guess. I mean, I put a fucking PNG in earlier, I suppose that's an asset. I don't... not the best asset. Um, there's probably some stuff I would want to do still. Like, I need to make... like, there's a bunch of game things, like textures and shit I haven't actually even thought about. There's a lot to think about, right? Um... Time to add 64 player multiplayer. Yeah. Um, 
I don't really think there's much else I want to do. I think I'm, I'm just kind of sat here not really doing anything. So I think I might end stream there for today. Uh, a lot more viewers for this than I was thinking, so thank you everyone for watching, even though I didn't really do much interesting today. Um, but I'm glad people enjoyed it. I'll, I'll promise I'll do much more interesting things tomorrow of like actually making the game. <laughs> We'll probably... I'd have to make... I'll make a plan in my head. We'd probably do... Uh, we got a moving box. 90% probability. I mean, yes. Like, yeah. But we can... I can uh, actually work on... We'll, we'll get the main menu functionals as buttons. The, the UI is stuff I need to figure out, right? Before I leave, let's make a UI element. Um... Like a button. Let's make a button. Let's make a button that starts the game in the main menu. That'll be the last thing I do for today. There you go. I figured out something I needed to do. Uh, a button. A check button. A color picker button. A menu button. An option button. A link button. A texture button. Let's make a texture button. Or a touch screen button. Let's make a texture button. Or a regular button. Let's make a regular button. What does this look like? Okay. So we have a button. Yep, that's that's a button, all right. We'll put the button there. Uh, start XD. We'll put in the middle. It'll be way too fucking small because the font is fucking stupid. Um, then how do we do button behavior? Ah, see, here you go. One, there was one last thing for me to do. How do buttons work? <laughs> how, how GUI? <laughs> button. Uh, function ready button. Oh, that's, uh, ready. Var button equal new button. Button text tech me. Button press, button press. Add char button. I already have a button. I am a button. That's how to create a button. But what if I already am a button? So I just had a script that just has button pressed in it. Connect button signal in Godot editor to function. Button signal. Node top right. I don't understand what you mean. Nodes. Oh, signals. I see. Base button, control, button down, button up, pressed. Connect signal to methods. Right, okay. So in main menu, if I have public, uh, wait, what? Oh, on button press. Receiver method, pick. Ready. It could be anything. Void on boo 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 tan. <laughs> Save. Close this. Build because it probably wants me to do that. Pressed. Main menu. Pick on boo tan. Ooh, as an advanced. Ooh, it can return a bool or whatever. Connect. Okay, so this is connected now. So an on bootan being pressed. Oh, I see. So it on. So when you press, it'll f cool the. F yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Toggled canvas. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. Wait, was this on lots of things that I didn't notice? Oh, so on draw, I could trigger. So when the node gets drawn, I can trigger something. 
Oh, that's really cool. Oh, what the fuck? Okay. Shit. I didn't... These buttons up here, I don't even fucking see. Yeah, these are all the signals. Ah. It can also be done via codes. Oh, can it? Okay. Um... I, I would always prefer to do these sort of things via code, rather than like in this hidden menu thing. How, how do you do signals via code? Let me just type signals. So this is a whole fucking thing I didn't know existed. Signals. C-sharp signals. Signals as events. Custom signals as C-sharp events. Signal emission. Bound signals. Signal creation at runtime. Okay. Using signals. Connect the signal in the editor. Connecting a signal via code. This is this one you can't know. Yeah, so this uh, kind of has a timer. Uh, head back to 2D web space. C sharp. Connect it to the ready function. What? the sprite out oh, in the ready function timer equal get no timer 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 dot timeout plus equals on timer timeout right okay so we would do ready and we would do uh get get node button right get get node what did i call it button okay <laughs> if I, now if i remember unity get node is like get uh, object or something. I can't remember what it's called, but it's terrible and it's slow as fuck, right? Um, so, because I'm making a fucking 2D game, Rain. What? Like, I don't need anything that crazy. Um, so, there's a much better way to do this, which is linking it in the editor, I guess, but I won't do that. Um, so we'll get node button. Uh, dot uh, pressed uh, dot oh okay I need to make a uh, git node is not that slow it recently got optimized too okay so it's not terrible uh, we'll just use a var button equals git node button I hate vars but we'll do it oh I, I could git node button to cast it as a button. What? Git node button button to cast it as a button. And then I can do dot pressed. Ah, look at that. Um, plus equals on bhutan semicolon. Yeah, okay, there we go. So I'd much rather do it like that than using the editor. Um, obviously, some people prefer editor, but... I would much rather... This is cool, and seeing the list is really good. And I'm sure for, like, scripters and teams where you have, like, just someone's making a level and they need to, like, have basic functionality, like this button, this switch connects to this door or whatever, that seems really good. For me, as a programmer, no. <laughs> I will write code, thank you. Git button, yes, on Bhutan. All right, on Bhutan, we switch the tree to the main thing. Okay, right, build that shit. Run it. Okay, start. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, how does the default button thing work? Okay, so I can... I can do this. Yeah, it's definitely a preference, but where I'm dealing with code, if I'm like, I'm going to be reading my code, and I'll be like, why is this button triggering this function, right? I'll be looking at this, and I won't be able to... Oh, you can't see it. 
I'll be looking at the code and I'll be asking myself, how do, why is it triggering it, right? Star XD. Wait. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was fun. Um, this was a thing that I did today. Oh, you get used to scenes being just as much a part of the source as the code. Right, okay, fair enough. We'll see what happens then. But, uh, okay, so I basically, I got all of the essentials done today. There's nothing, like, flashy or good or anything. But, like, this is my first time using Godot properly. I've dabbled in it. Um, but, yeah, this is the first time I've ever made a anything in Godot, so I'm having to like learn all of the basics and I haven't programmed in like two years or whatever. So yeah, we got a start button, it starts, we got this, we got the position of the mouse moving, we figured out how all that works, we've got a sprite that moves left and forth, left and backwards, I can press escape to close the game, and it builds to my phone and runs on my phone perfectly. I want to see how the button works on my phone, that is not the button I just want to push. I want to push this one. I'm going to try the button on my phone, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah. So, you know. This is a lot of, uh, this is good progress. I've, I've got the entire pipeline figured out. I've got a bunch of fundamental stuff done, like scenes and all that stuff. Um, the next thing I'm going to need to figure out is how, like, what generating uh, nodes at runtime is like. Um... Start XD, boop, hooray, the cube, it moves. Um, yeah, that's that's another thing, is like, uh, yeah, st creating stuff at runtime, I wonder what that's going to be like. Um, like, because I want to make, I want, I guess it would be like a prefab situation with Unity, where I'll have an enemy, I'll have an enemy thing, it did move, how did you know? I'll have an enemy thing node that I'll need packaged, I guess they're called, packaged node, and then I'll instantiate the packaged node in the correct area, and I'll have like an emitter object that emits the enemies based on how well we're doing and stuff. Build scene, load pack scene, instantiate node, add child to scene tree. Yeah, sure. Yeah, add it to the scene tree. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy with progress. Um, yeah, hopefully tomorrow is a bit more involved in this so we can actually do game development stuff, but this was good. And, you know, I'm, I am streaming this for the first time ever. The layout is obviously terrible. <laughs> um, and s screen capturing is my nemesis, and I would much rather just window capture everything, but it's kind of difficult when I have so many poppy-uppy windows all the time. And uh, even here, like, if I open IntelliSense, uh, you can't see it, right? Like, like you can't see any of this. But I have, like, a bunch of boxes open that's, like, helpful and stuff, so you can't see any of that. Is this going to YouTube? I don't know. Um, I, I can't imagine this doing that well on YouTube. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe I'll publish it to YouTube, we'll see, but um, I guess the file size is going to be nothing, so it won't be that hard to publish it to YouTube, but yeah, it's whatever, right? I guess, maybe. <laughs> I can have like a vlog, I, the, the, way I, I, uh, the way I wanted to do it, I forgot, the way I wanted to do the YouTube thing was to have like, I would do like, okay YouTube, here's this bit, and then I push a button, and uh make a note of where I said that, right? I wanted to do it that way. But I didn't do that, so this video would require a ton of editing if I don't just publish this raw. Um, shit. I forgot about that. Oh well. Um, yeah, I'd probably be making highlights so it'd be better. It'd be like... Yeah, so I would do a thing, and then I'd push a button on my stream deck, which I already have set up, where I make a stream marker. And then I would say, hello, like, hey, I just did this thing, YouTube, look at all this, blah, 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 blah. And then I'd cut to the, jump cut to the next bit, right? Something actually happens, rather than me just sat here staring at a thing for ages, right? But 
Maybe I can cut this down a little bit. But yeah, I forgot to be add I forgot to add the stream markers to make my life easier. Never mind. Okay. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Um thanks for watching the stream. Like I said, yeah, loads of people watched more than I thought. This I thought I was gonna have like 50 viewers. But I'm glad people are interested. I'll try to tomorrow I'll do like actual interesting things instead of just setting up my development environment. Um but yeah, I'm going to go sort the house out and uh, cook dinner and stuff. And then, oh yeah, my bike. I get to go see my fucking bike. Oh my god, I might be buying a bike tonight. I might be buying a carbon fiber bike. We'll see. Alright, see you guys later. Bye.